Yeah, that's a great idea. Or we can all go down there. <laughs> yeah, there I we go. This. Well, it's, at least we have a circle that way. You don't can't go in the. We can't go in the office. But you can write it's on. Not the a door. closed session item. But it's open. We can keep the doors open. I mean, just so it's comfortable. So if we but want to, we can write being, on the board. But it's not It would be recorded. Oh. Probably should be recorded because I especially asked. Yeah. Uh, I think. Okay. Um, Char wants to review it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just that this okay, is really gonna, um, uncomfortable. We're going to call the meeting to order oh, at 304. Um, roll call. Ms. Snell. Here. Ms. Matoyer. Ms. Fleur. Here. Mr. Davenport. Here. Ms. Franco. Ms. Black. Here. Ms. Yelsey. Here. Dr. Navarro. Here. Okay. Um, so we were just talking about uh, the principals coming forward and sitting at these mics so you can... Um, so there's uh, three table, three seats here, and then one right there by Kirk. Who wants to draw the short straw? <laughs> <laughs> so we're missing. Why is the short straw bad? No. We're missing Jake and and Hulk. Mike. Yeah. Okay. Oh well. Okay. Oh, I got it backwards. I oh. thought it was the other way. Around. Okay, Mike will be here, so he can sit over there. Okay. Well, he can. We can move. We can move another one over there. Okay. So, we've got a discussion guide. Um, we're going to uh, have a discussion on student board member selection process. And um, I see Sherry has put together some stuff for us, a discussion guide and the stuff, some of the stuff we had last time as well. Uh, uh, President Snow, would you like mm -hmm. to set the stage? I think it's important that um, well, I, they've had conversations. I think that they need to understand where we're coming from, and maybe you can set the stage on, on okay. this, this conversation before we jump into any dis sort of discussion on it. Okay. So what this, what um, we were concerned about is that the um, the student board members weren't uh, getting enough of an opportunity to participate in a meaningful way in our at our meetings. They um, would come as requested and give a report of what's going on at their school, which is important and we liked. But they really, um, um, other than that, weren't involved. In fact, many times would leave immediately following that and um, because they were told they could do that. So we want to create... Um, uh, student board positions. We talked about having just one board member um, that represented all the schools and the others would be ambassadors that would just give reports. But last time I think we agreed that we wanted one from each um, school that would rotate in some manner um, sitting on, up here in the dais and would be um, aware, would be given an agenda, would stay for the entire meeting, um, would be able to have a um, provisional vote if it's on a student type um, of an issue, and could just give input. And so what we're trying to do is determine how to make that happen, whether it happens I think uh, right now, you, sometimes ASB appoints, sometimes the principal appoints, but I think we want to go outside that parameter and give, it, it could be anyone, somebody from youth and government, somebody that's really involved and wants to be involved in, in government. So that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Did I forget anything? No, Feel I think free that... To, yeah. You know, it's no reflection on this crop of board members. Um, we've had fabulous years where every single board member participates, attends. We have some that are sporadic. We have some that uh, show up at the dinner and then we never <laughs> see them again. And then there's some that are really, really participatory. And we have some schools that are very well represented and always have their two. And sometimes we mm -hmm. don't have any. And I think mm -hmm. that the big issue is that um, for those of us who've been on the board a long time, we've seen a change. Um, in the past, it was an elected position from ASB, and uh, it wasn't, and so they would come through. Um, in, the, in the recent years, it always seems to be the president or the pres 
you know, the head of the ASB, who are already extremely committed um, in their own right, um, in terms of their extracurricular, their drama, they were in drama, they were in the play, they were in athletics, you name it, but they were typically the leadership of, of ASB. And um, in some cases that turned to be, a, you know, popularity contests, they didn't have to, and so we were really concerned because when you're that involved and you're getting, a, you're actually getting a leadership grade, because um, mm -hmm. you get a, a get a grade, don't they get a grade in leadership, ASB grade, um, how can we justify and hold them accountable if they're getting a leadership grade and they're not showing here? Mm -hmm. I mean, and if that's part of their responsibilities, who's assigning them a grade? The advisors are not here. Mm -hmm. um, to 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 look at them and see whether they're how participatory they are. We don't we take we take role, mm -hmm. um, but and that's part of our issue is is holding them accountable. If they're really interested, mm -hmm. then great. We'd love to have them. We want them here, um, but giving them an opportunity mm -hmm. to really fully engage in the democratic process as a, right as and, board and, members and make it. A more meaningful. I mean, it, right now, that's what's expected. So they're doing what, what we've expected. They're coming, they're giving the report. And so, but we want it to be um, more, uh, more of an, a good experience for them, or a bad, <laughs> whatever. Um, I think uh, Dana was going to talk to the, the student. Oh, Thursday. Oh, oh okay. <clears throat> student advisory, oh, okay. you know, superintendent, student advisory. Um, but I've also been really close to the kids because it's something that I'm passionate about. And so the really, really good years that we've had where we've been engaged with students that we asked for their input on decisions over the years have been students that themselves are interested in mm -hmm. the governance part. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they are, they are interested in it. You know, like I've had many coffees and, you know, with students that have served. And by the way, I get their parents' permission before we do that, so um, in writing. But they have shared that they have, a, they have an interest in it. And they also want us to understand where they're coming from. And mm -hmm. those are few and far between, to be honest. I mean, you know, they have, you know, we have sat down and talked about it, but they don't, you know, they don't really um, see what they would do. And then they always say, well, it's ASB, so, you know, and I'm not a part of that. Yeah. You know, so so what uh, what we wanted you uh, you here for is to give us your opinion on this and how um, how you think it would be a good way to pick any any um, information you might have. I don't know if you so yeah. um, they've already met before oh, good. Uh, and talked about the issues and good. so Dr. Barmeister facilitated that conversation. So I asked him to facilitate the feedback that he got from them okay. when they discussed this topic earlier. Okay. So after I had listened to the discussion on the dais, I went back and talked to the principals about uh, um, your desires uh, moving forward. Some of the concerns they had is, as you said, that the, the people that they generally have are overcommitted. As you know, a lot of them are in AP classes. A lot of them are in athletics. Um, one of the issues that they talked about, too, is uh, if they rotated people, um, it would be difficult for that one person every, however it would be, six weeks mm -hmm. to get up to speed on the issues. One of the things that they kind of felt uh, on a broader consensus range is that if they had one person and, and they knew that was going to be their role every week, that they would be able to be, or every two weeks, mm -hmm. they would be able to up, be up on the issues and I think be a little bit more engaged maybe than the others. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so uh, they understood the value of what you were talking about and, and uh, the, that person being involved in the process. They just thought it, may be difficult, it would be difficult to find that person um, unless, again, they, they, this thing was spelled out to everybody in advance. They knew exactly what mm -hmm. they were uh, going to be mm -hmm. getting into. So mm -hmm. from there, I'll, I'll leave it open to them to speak individually, but it, kind of the broad mm -hmm. consensus was that they felt that if they had that one person that could be there you mm -hmm. know, consistently, it would, it would be better. Mm -hmm. Is this a job that you think um, should go to a to a twelfth grader? Given 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 all of the things that they have to do in that twelfth grade, do less is this something I that that I mean I don't know. I think they do more in eleventh grade that 
would occupy their time in terms of academics. Yeah, I, I, th I, I would think seniors are, it would be a good, I mean, a good role for a senior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's, yeah. Plus they've been through all the grades. They have a good overall. Yeah. Should um, they be on ASB? I would say no. Yeah, I personally, I, I think, uh, and, I, and I speak for our school, but I think we kind of discussed this at our meeting, that um, <clears throat> this is a great leadership opportunity, and I think for a unique student, mm -hmm. and and I think you're right, what you've all described is who gets picked, because I think mm -hmm. for most of us, they're off our ASB, and it's either a volunteer, or you're the president, you're mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. and there's no buy-in, and mm -hmm. I think this is a great chance for a student who is passionate about politics, who mm -hmm. maybe wants to go into education, mm -hmm that they can have a leadership role that's unique just for them and, uh, and would have a lot of ownership to it. Mrs. Black. Oh, I would, my, I, my light was on, but I always have an opinion. So I, <laughs> Did you just hold it down the whole time? I, yeah, no, no, but I agree. I, I think that's what my experience has been. And they are out there. They are. And um, so I, I really think it's, um, because we were talking about who would we, you know, rely on to go out there. But I think, you know, if if it went out as a district through the principal, mm -hmm. if you are interested, this is your commitment. Mm -hmm. And the Board of Education, um, you know, would really encourage you. And, and maybe we interview, mm -hmm. you know. I, like I, mean, I mean, we'd be, so that they would have a process and understand and then a point. You know, possibly, right. but that's you know that's putting a lot on our plate. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah go ahead. My no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. This is kind um, of free flowing here. So. Well, my light was on. I oh, was so waiting. she just picked me instead of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, it reminds me what you said of a similar process that the city just went through with the mayor's youth council that they, that they have, where kids would sign up to go for the year. And they go because they could put it on their resume as mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of that council. And then they wouldn't show up, would show up sometimes. <clears throat> they try to get discussions. And, and the city puts a lot of time and effort into mm -hmm. this program. So this year, in addition to that, they started an ambassadors program where kids were interviewed. They had to apply and were interviewed for this. And they become part of this program and really are much more involved. Mm -hmm. They. Once, I, I don't know how often, but they meet with specific people at the city, and so they know more about what's going on with city government, and it's working. They're taking a much more active role because they're involved, but they went through an in-depth interview process. They had to apply, answer questions. Maybe that's the kind of person we're looking for. They may not know all, what, you, what you were just accounting. You probably, or no one probably goes out and says, it has to be someone who's interested in government, who's interested mm -hmm. in education, who, want, you know, we, I don't think we've ever, it's, it's not Never. any mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. students' <clears throat> fault that they haven't participated more than they have right. because we haven't asked them yeah. to mm -hmm. and, and they don't know anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think if we put it out there that these are what the expectations are, it's a great opportunity for someone who's looking for this, maybe that's mm -hmm. the way to go. And, and I think the ambassador, I think that there are, there are so many opportunities because, um, one, we can recommend people to serve on the state board of, of mm -hmm. education. You know, there is a student board member on that that's appointed, a high school student mm -hmm. that's appointed on the state board. Um, CSBA has a ledge <laughs> committee. They've appointed um, individuals on that. We've had one here. Um, Nicholas Jaber was on our student board, as a student board member. Um, on the ledge committee for CSBA. Uh, there's trainings opportunities. Um, the annual conference um, has that opportunity to go. And I just think that even in the ambassador, just think of what we could do if, you know, if we're going to an event, how great is it that we have a student with us? But it would have to be someone who's oh, exactly. really interested in and wants exactly. to. Exactly. Exactly. But and I think the interview handle process. handle their own is, grades too, so that it doesn't <clears> impact them. You know, being away. Well, I think that's what our, uh, you know, superintendent student advisory participants believe they are. Mm -hmm. Because we are asking, so they're mm -hmm. already a body mm -hmm. that we are actually, you know, working. Cabinet works with them. You know, Dr. Navarro does. We, you know, are, so, and um, <coughs> Dr. D, and that's what, that's what they'll tell you. They wanted to be, you know, these children, you know, children. These how, students really wanted to be How involved. often do they meet? Once a month. 
and maybe so. and maybe the board member the student board member would be part of that group just as mm -hmm. a, as a way to um, as a way to go back to somebody and and talk about what we're doing and you know just Who another do those people go back to um, they go to the, well. They're activity directors, right? That's who. Uh, or ASB students. Yeah, okay. so that's who is. How are they selected? We just ask for two from each school, and the activities directors <laughs> uh, select so you them. Know, you're it. You're it. Basically, uh, and, and then but the activities. It's not. It's it's the student advisory, but the activity directors are also there. So uh, they're there to carry, help them carry the message back to school. Okay, that's good. And so it works, yeah. and, and if Dana can, ex can explain this to you, but it really works like an accordion. Right. So we talk about something here, then they go back out and talk mm -hmm. about it at their schools and try to get more students involved in the discussion. They come back in with their information, and that's how we, it goes back and forth. And the other thing is they're a collective group of all of our um, high schools, you know, so all six of them. So um, Back Bay has been tremendous input, you know, mm -hmm. um, for for the students as well as early college high school. They all want to. They all wanted. They pitched the calendar so well mm -hmm. at early college that all the students were prepared and ready to go out and, you know, and get their message out because they, you know, they understood it. So they work together. So there's no, you know, gaps, and they are a collective body. For, you know that represents the students of Newport Mesa um, where and, and they that's why we make around Robin and go to the different schools mm -hmm. to host the meetings so that they get to come on campus and you know and the principals get to host <laughs> you know come in so um, it's really great and it helps you know because mm -hmm. they they are finding out that hey it's you know it's not that different but we do have a particular culture at our school let me share that with you, mm -hmm. and they will talk about mm -hmm. it. So, I mean, it's, I think it's pretty fabulous. You know? So, so um, actually, I, I agree with what you said. That's kind of the way I pitched it at the very beginning, was one person. And um, so what do you think about, um, uh, obviously, it's, it'd be hard to um, do all this by the time of the end of the year. What, what do you think about trying to put together an, an application and and all that is involved and um, just try to get somebody interviewed and in by the beginning of next year because the new board members come in and in mm -hmm. in, um, in First of December mm -hmm. and I mean hopefully a little before that so that you have somebody ready to go to to the conference. Yeah. They, they actually started well, But I, I, I think oh. maybe you should get input from the principals, one, because they're here, and two, because they'd be trying to find that person. But I mean, I'm saying not one person from every school. Oh, you're going I back to one person? I, well, I mean, that's what you pitched. Oh, no, no. Oh. I, meant, oh. I meant one from each school. Each school. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, okay, but I thought that you one said. unique student that okay. would represent... Yeah, that, that okay. wouldn't work for... <laughs> okay. Oh, I thought you meant just one, because that's what I thought. Okay. Okay, well, that's fine with me, too. One person from each school is... Uh... So does every single student that's in ASB run for a position? There's a, like three, there's, so there's like three or four that are elected, and the rest are appointed yeah. or go through interviews. There's poster painters and... <laughs> they get, so so they, those individuals go through an interview process. Who interviews them? Probably varies from school to school. So, uh, you know, at Estancia, some some of the positions are elected positions. The students are elected by the student body. Uh, probably 75% of the positions are uh, what we call appointed. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's an interview process which is conducted by, uh, it's led by the ASB director. And then there's uh, either an administrator or uh, two teachers who uh, participate in the, uh, the interview as well. And then they'll... Um, make their decisions based on the criteria and assign so, the so, so you have a criteria, so they have a criteria, that, so, and they have an application process. Is there letters of recommendation from, so you don't, a, you don't need a teacher letter of re recommendation no, or the counselor recommendation? What we do is, the, at our school, they just send out the list to all the teachers yep. and say, is there any student on here that you have any concerns about? Uh, okay. And so then those, those get eliminated, and then that means everybody else is good to go. And typically... Mike, would you pull the mic over when you speak? Oh, Otherwise you so, don't get... And typically, do you, how, do you have a, a large propensity, I mean... 
you have, just for numbers, you got 50 slots and you only have 50 s s places, or do you have 30 slots and you get 50? I mean, do, you, do you have more kids interested or less kids interested in the slots and you have to go out and b beat the bushes to get more kids? Uh, well, at Estancia, you know, I would say it's probably, we'll need uh, to fill about 20 uh, appointed positions. Uh, we usually have about 50 people who will apply for those things, go through the interview process. So I guess it seems to me in terms of talking, is that typical of all of you? Is that how you That's all do it? Run Sometimes there's, you know, so there are open, there are appointed positions and? Elected. Elected. At, at early college, they're all elected. This is the first year we just had our elections last week, and we had more students apply than we had positions to fill. So hmm. what we do is any student that's not elected, and we're talking about, well, this year it turned out to be four students. They're invited to be in the student government class where they have an assistive role in the class. So all the uh, officers and those four students would be in the student government class at early college. It's zero period for us. So that's how they uh, get their grade in the class. They're there every day and then they're doing other duties on campus. They run our assemblies and other activities. So we try to provide even a student that is not one in the election some sort of a opportunity to still serve. Well, I guess that's the thing. Go ahead, Mike. Ms. Flora, I was just going to say, um, if you look at Huntington, my former district, and I'm not saying this is the right way, wrong mm -hmm. way, uh, but to take some of the pressure off the students, uh, what each elected position would do was uh, rotate the responsibilities of going to each board um, meeting mm -hmm. so that they're throughout fruition, and they would collaborate and deliver the report for each school. And this way, the kids that were appointed had some of the pressures taken off of them, which they might only need to go to three or four board meetings a year, opposed to dozens of them. And it seemed to help out with the kids who are super busy, how uh, they can plan more appropriately. Well, I just, I, I mean, why reinvent the wheel when you have already have an appointed process and it just becomes one addition? I mean, we would provide you the criteria you know, and then the list goes out and says, here are the list of positions. They're running for these four officers. Here's the list of the other officers, whether it's the, what, activities? Is activities one of them? And Yeah, spirit commissioner. Spirit commissioner. Tech, tech commissioner, yes. communications commissioner, yeah. So, so it could be one of, the, one of those, and so you'd have... A, but then it, it's still, then it goes back to being an ASP yeah, position. I would rather see it global. Yeah. Well, but it's also, but it, see, see if it ASB, if, if the whole purpose of this is for leadership, that is, a, that's, a, I mean, how, who's going to assign the grade? If it's not, if they're not part of ASB, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate, if they're mm -hmm. not part, if they're applying, they haven't been in ASB, they're not in an elected position, they're just wanting to be interested, who is responsible for well, giving them the grade? Why do you have to get a grade? Because that's a leadership. That's how you hold them accountable. Or they credit or something. So, not a, I don't mean to be dominating, so <laughs> jump in, please. But, uh, but when I was you. in Anaheim before I came here, I was a part of their switch to uh, the ambassador. And it's exactly what you're looking for. Uh, and so each school, we publicized it. You know, we worked mm -hmm. with, the, the, with the school mm -hmm. board. And so someone like Annette Franco would help us put together an application that, that voiced what you guys were looking for, all the criteria. Mm -hmm. And then we, the schools were responsible for publicizing that and recruiting. Then the, the, each school vetted all the applicants. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, here's Mr. You know, Estancia High School that's in five AP classes and mm -hmm. never leadership. Okay, no, he's not going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, that, so everybody went through and picked a student that they felt like had proven themselves as just a good student, conscientious, but was not involved in a thousand things mm -hmm. and was really looking for that one special mm -hmm. opportunity right. to shine mm -hmm. and be a leader and be committed to something. Exactly. And then, and we could determine it here, like if we wanted to say every school sends two or three forward, <coughs> so you have mm -hmm. about 15 candidates, and then mm -hmm. you guys mm -hmm. just interview like 15 mm -hmm. and then pick your five. And then, and yeah, because I, I think that. it's important that they're interviewed by you I do who too. are going to be kind of their Because then it's like it, it elevates it. Like it's not just an appointed position. You are being, you are, you are chosen and your commitment is to the board. And I don't yeah. see why it has to have a grade. I well, mean, I just think that, resume, I think that they're but. putting in a lot of time and effort. If you think about it, it's a lot of time. They should get credit for it somewhere. And the only logical place is for them on their resume, they get credit well, for it. 
they could be added to ASB as as a. Oh, actor. can they? I, I have be the antagonist. The I'll be the. That's my role. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know you're going to agree with me. <laughs> I am. Yeah, as best you tell, I'm in 100% agreement because I, I do think that uh, the, the kids who you want sitting on the dais mm -hmm. are going to be motivated by more things than just a grade. Exactly. And I think that if I'm not talking about a grade, but credit. They should get right. some recognition of but, some sort, and I, it's not going to go show up on a transcript. Oh, but I do think that you know what. Mm -hmm. What I've seen in my former districts is mm -hmm. the individual who's interested in it, they are looking for the, the opportunity to make their college application a little bit uh, exactly. more appealing. Uh, and being able to state that they were selected by the uh, NMUSD school board to represent all students on issues pertaining to education mm -hmm. means a lot and it speaks mm -hmm. a lot. And I think that will means carry more, more weight uh, than... Uh, you know, a grade or than an ASB grade. grade. Yeah. So, the, uh, and I'm just playing devil's advocate because I'm I'm not disagreeing. But okay, so now he doesn't show up, or so, he doesn't show up. What happens? So they it, get eliminated. Yeah. And they How? Lose that position. How? If, if I may, with with that, and I've I've seen mm -hmm. this occur, mm -hmm. that because of the um, prestigiousness of being in that role, uh, it comes a responsibility and the accountability right. that you're talking about. But quite frankly, if they do not fulfill that obligation, whether it's in September, October, mm -hmm. or January, February, uh, I, I believe that if that person um, doesn't show up, uh, not a, a legitimate mm -hmm. reason, they're removed and replaced mm -hmm. with somebody else. Mm -hmm. I, I think that okay. clearly has to be mm -hmm. put out there. To me, that's the accountability. Exactly. The, the grade, the credit. Uh, it may not mean anything to Well, I, to I just want to make sure that we have the accountability, yeah. that we have the ability to, and w would we do this publicly? Right. I mean, if you're a publicly appointing them, because that's mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing, we can't do this in closed session, so you are publicly mm -hmm. appointing them, mm -hmm. yes. it would be also the same, publicly removing them from office. Right. And, the, and, and that, th that responsibility the, needs to be put up front. Here. <laughs> and if they can't fulfill their duties, just like any good leader exactly. would, whether you're an adult or a student, you know what, you, if, if their circumstances changes and they can't fulfill their duties, the right thing to do as a leader is you step down, mm -hmm. you and know, and I, you let the next person step up. Exactly. Uh, yeah. and, and the one, all uh, colleges require a mid-year report, so at the, what, January, into January, February, -ish. so this could be stated in the contract when they sign, you know, okay, that uh, they'll be, it'll be reported to their university mm -hmm. that they were removed mm -hmm. from this position. It's that, yeah. and I go back to what, you know, uh, what Russell or Mr. Lee Sung said, I don't know how formal we are here, but anyway. <laughs> we're not. Uh, we're not. Uh, we're not. Uh, yeah, Mr. Lee Sung. Uh, it, the more, I mean, you make it a prestigious position. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, exactly. and, it's, and I think you set that up by the criteria, the interview process, and the accountability. Then kids rise to that occasion. You set the bar high, they'll they be will. there. Exactly. Yeah. We may put a picture of them up in the oh, lobby. I'm, I mean, just not, you know? I'm not, I'm okay with it. As long as we have the, the ability to, you know, we have to hold them accountable. They sure. just can't say, well, you know, I'm coming, but, and, you know, or you have two and they, they can rotate between a, the, an alternate so that you have, you always have coverage. Just, you know, and I think it, it, it's good for us to be like Kirk's really good. I don't know if he admits this to you guys, but he always texts us who if our if our uh, representatives are here or not. Good for you. <laughs> every, every Tuesday night, we can always expect a text from Kirk. Um, text of shame. Yeah, the text <laughs> of shame. Our, our reps not here. It's Where were they? It's been effective. It has. It has. No, I hated it last year. I'm like, oh god. But anyway, um, but but I know when I was in Anaheim, we had that happen to one of our students, and you know, so we called her in, and it turned she didn't have transportation and she mm. was too embarrassed to say mm. so we worked all that out for her mm -hmm. exactly. you know and that's all it was it just was that one little piece that she needed and uh and so we we fixed that issue for her. but also like i've seen where they they because it drives me crazy sometimes what they wear to board meetings and yeah. i try to talk to our reps about mm -hmm. it <laughs> But uh, but is they had uh, blazers. They had like khaki skirts, khaki pants, a white shirt, and a blue blazer. And and it doesn't have to be that. But mm -hmm. it was and it was attire. it was professional attire. Mm -hmm. and they wore Ooh, it to that's the board a good meetings. idea. Mm -hmm. And then they truly became ambassadors at events. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, right. They were I at like the it. events. I like the that. I like the blazer. So it wasn't just the the long laborious meetings that you know they need to watch and see because mm -hmm. those are pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. But then and they came back and reported to the administration what happened and updated us. 
focus on stuff that happened at the board meeting, but then also they were at a different events to see there's also that positive side. Good. That's, that's good. Exactly, yeah. and and we could do that. We could have them come. You know, they wouldn't all have to come, but and and going back to the having an alternate, I. I you know, again, that puts somebody off. It's, it's okay. I, well, I'm okay. okay. I just want to Mrs. Yelsey. Well, I was going to say about that, that if, if we go back to what you were talking about and mm -hmm. you interview people, the, the schools do, and come up with three or four mm -hmm. that are brought to us, mm -hmm. and probably it would be a group of three of us that, mm -hmm. that interview, mm -hmm. um, then we could have someone that we know is an alternate, that if something the happened, wings. there's someone there waiting. And also, we could address the issues of what's involved with this. So if somebody didn't have transportation for some reason, we might be able to find that out up front and mm -hmm. be able to work that out. You know, we, we could try to get out all the kinks at that mm -hmm. point when we're interviewing them, mm -hmm. to, when we tell them exactly what's required. Yeah, I agree. Again, you know, when we interview for our board, if we have an opening on our board, it's all done in public. All seven, all six of us were here. Yeah, right? it's great fun. They had to sit here, <laughs> and we, we, you know, and they ha we have to ask the That's same. That's why exact, I'm saying maybe have, it should be three because I, I think we have to ask the same questions. But, but it, that's part of the that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, if yes, you really they're not trying, they're not elected by the public. Right. They're, no, they're just not. appointed by us, and so it's not different. Voting. Yeah. They're, they're giving us, you know, their opinion. Well, they, we can grant them a provisional well, we, you know, Yes, yeah, but, but it's it not going to sway yeah. that vote. Yeah. Is no. what, yeah. So I don't want to mislead students with that. Mm -hmm. Well, that I, I also think that um, in today's uh, climate that uh, you don't want them to be lobbied. Right. You know, oh, and, right. and I think there's some... Uh, it might be wise uh, to uh, not put them in the limelight. As Hamlet yeah. said, I'm too much in the sun. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe start with a three-person interview panel who would come and write, make a recommendation mm -hmm. to the board mm -hmm. about who they recommend. And then and square, and then square them in as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, we still are remembering that these are students. Yeah. Right. And we don't put, want to put them in a position uh, where they're being uh, uh, exposed to the same pressures as a, 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 an elected board member. Really yeah. <laughs> You're not and I'm afraid of that too. Yeah. I, you know, I, I just think that you know these are our students, and we want them to have a great uh, experience mm -hmm. and a positive experience, and we want them to feel good about uh, local government mm -hmm. and inspire them to be whether they get involved or not. You know that they would uh, be active citizens forever because of this experience. As you go through mm -hmm. your process, the one thing I would encourage you to keep in mind, you're trying to create a position that you know, has a lot of status to it, that the, so the person feels a sense of obligation to mm -hmm. meet your high standards, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, you know, their professional attire, their, uh, the way they conduct themselves, the, the regularity in which they can be counted on to attend all meetings. If you create a system that also then feels like a quota in which each stool is going to have a representative, <coughs> it takes away from that sort of specialness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my former district had mm -hmm. one person who owned it for the entire year. Uh, there was never a sense of, well, it's this turn, this school's turn this year mm -hmm. to provide the representative. It was truly earned uh, each year, and mm -hmm. some years it was back to back from the same school because that's where the best candidate was. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's an okay thing to have because mm -hmm. you're trying to create a sense of this is a prestigious position and right. it's not one in which uh, it's my turn in the barrel that's the third mm -hmm. Thursday of the, the mm -hmm. fourth month so therefore I got to go do this mm -hmm. it's I've earned this they're expecting me and you know if I fail to live up to their high standards I know that there's a equally good candidate waiting in the wings to be appointed mm -hmm. uh, if I do stumble mm -hmm. um, but I would just caution us about the idea of every school needs to pr mm -hmm. present mm -hmm. X number of candidates and every school will be represented every X number of years, mm -hmm. um, but really look at uh, creating a Person. true meritocracy in which uh, the best candidate is selected um, to represent our, our schools. Point, counterpoint. Uh, <laughs> I, I just want to agree with you. I just want to let you know that uh, Sherry did a lot of homework yes, on this. Yes, 
Uh, she provided a lot, and the feedback that she got was if the school districts that went with one student mm -hmm. missed the flavor of all the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. there was there's something to be said for this balance of mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. maybe a lead, and because in Anaheim it was a lead who was at the at the dais, and they would I think uh, as uh, Mark said they would talk and uh, the they would represent the other other board members other student board like members for from, the from year or yeah for the yeah. entire year that that person well, did that I, but i just and then on, yeah. obviously if she if she or he weren't there i i do believe we brought one of the others up to the dais so that there wasn't a pressure to be here all the time i mean they are students yeah. they are going to go on field trips <laughs> they are going to be in ap classes and uh you'll have to there has to be some relief mechanism in place so so yeah. it's one for each okay so what you're saying is um, there would be six um, student board members uh, and they're from the six they or somebody would choose a lead the board would choose we would choose the lead the lead would sit up here the others would sit in the audience and um, then if some if the lead would was had something they were sick or whatever then you pull up somebody from right, there right. rather than the other thing we talked about was rotating right well, it, so the other ones sit that weren't the lead for the year it, it would just be you know it's been a while year. since i was in anaheim so <laughs> i will tell you do you envision that as being as they do now just being um, out there and giving reports? i remember and you'll have to ask russell and kathy uh -huh. they probably remember better than i do uh -huh. but i remember a general overview given by the student board member who was the actual board member mm -hmm. and then other uh, that the students coming up and filling in some details uh, for the board I believe so yeah, and I, I agree yeah. with dr. Navarro mm -hmm. and, and Russell my way on this I, I just remember when they had the one give all the reports it I always felt like they were real passionate about their school and then yeah. they go and then over at this school and then over at this school you, it, did, it didn't have the flavor yeah and I like that part mm -hmm. too well, it's so. interesting because I looked up I looked up one just random Manteca Unified has um, they actually have a president of the student school board <laughs> members a vice president and then they have you know there's like six or seven of them because they have all their high schools each high school is represented but they I haven't figured out because I can't find I didn't find it in their bylaws I didn't find it in their policies how they selected who was going to be the president of their school board their their group and who you know and who was the vice president to designate who was going to be sitting I didn't I couldn't find that so I thought well I would give them a call well I, I think you have a, a, some issues that we can work on um, we can do the research and call Manteca find out what their board policies are but I think um, the principals have said something very wise is that you really should be the one that interview I agree. or yeah, uh, I three board members should interview mm -hmm. all of those interested applicants whether it's one from each school or three from each school mm -hmm. or one or whoever shows up from yeah. each yeah. school yeah. Um, and pick the pick the six best and out of the six best you pick the one that that you believe deserves the honor of sitting at the dais um, and then we can work on uh, the structure uh, you know, if you want to name a, a, a president of the student board council, yeah. that's fine. Mm -hmm. We could name a, a vice president, and then yeah. it's almost like a, a, a succession. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. if the mm -hmm. if the president's out, the vice yeah, president yeah. would come up and, and take their place. I like what Kathy said. Um, you know, the I, I do remember the the, the ambassador that sat at the dais would kind of do an overview but then every kid would come up and speak about their school mm -hmm. uh which is a nice flavor mm -hmm. um and then i think you can decide whether I, I mean at that point you do have a board member who will stay for the whole board meeting and the others could go on but if you want them to stay they need to know that ahead of time mm -hmm. when they apply um maybe they stay for the reports you know because yeah. i think they they miss a lot when they, they should stay for the whole thing yeah yeah well and I, that's I and that's and that's something that that yeah. that you know we need to, to to nail down before we uh issue them the application and ask them to seek out so candidates. you but you would you would you would go out and recruit correct and then you'd you'd vet the the candidates and then you'd send the 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 three that you'd be recommending you wouldn't be sending us wholesale all of them well, uh, michael and i were just talking 
you know, it, it varies from year to year. Like last year, I couldn't have sent anybody. He couldn't send anybody this year. But I, not, and I don't know if that's necessarily true. But mm -hmm. I think we would publicize it, you know, and then let the applicants come in as they may. Mm -hmm. And But let's say at Estancia this year, maybe they had one. Mm -hmm. So they send you the one mm -hmm. to interview, mm -hmm. unless they felt like that was not a worthy one. Then maybe mm -hmm. they just so you you but you would do the We'd, you would do a vetting. But let's say at Harbor, all of a sudden they had twenty apply. Yeah, well, then they would vet out and send you four or five at the most. Mm -hmm. So you're not interviewing a hundred <laughs> thousands students. of them. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Black. I'm, I, I also want to remind you. I'm more interested. I want to hear what they have to say you know, about their school and what's going on, because mm -hmm. it, there, there's a lot of pride in that when they come and share. Sure. But I also want to know what their opinion, and I, you know, is I want them to be able to weigh in. So I, I'm not necessarily sure that one person has to sit up here. I think that they're collectively, and this is just my opinion, you know, able to decide, because they do that now. You know, we'll let Mikey do it. You know, that's basically how they do it. <laughs> but, you know, it would be, I, I want to hear, you know, if, gonna, if we're going to force them to stay here, we have to give them some, you know, the opportunity to weigh in. And there's lots of different, especially with the new math adoption coming in and um, science standards and things like that. I think they, you know, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. So I would like to see them, I mean, that's the only reason I'm doing it, because I'm perfectly happy the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're, you know, if this is what's going to happen, then they can come in, give us a report, and be on their merry way. But I do know that there's probably, my gut tells me over the years of serving on the board that there are students that, you know, would love the opportunity, but don't think they have that, mm -hmm. you know, to be in and stuff. So... So I like the idea of, mm -hmm. of hearing from them and letting them know that they can do and that. And that's a very good point, Trustee Black. And, and you know, back to Dr. Navarro's point about someone lobbying, it's walking that right. thin line between giving a report of significance and also someone that's going, not going to lobby or mm -hmm. be politically driven by certain agendas or what have you. Right. But mm -hmm. you know, as, as just sitting here listening to it, kind of vacillating between identifying students on campus, just tapping some students on the shoulder that you know would mm -hmm. be great up here. Mm -hmm. um, it would be great to have a senior because they've had the four-year experience. Mm -hmm. They've probably exactly. had the K-12 experience. Mm -hmm. And then maybe creating a position, a commissioner position within ASB of that person that's appointed to be on the board. The and other, after. after the fact, and, and oh, that's the one a good thing idea, that, to that report back. you just can't, yeah. And we do try and talk to them before about attire and about what mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. What gets a little laborious is that, you know, the rally was last Wednesday. We lost to CDM in the football game. We, you know, <laughs> and just go, I'm just, that, that's just one example. Yeah. Again, just, there are many. Yeah. yeah, there are many losses that have stung yeah. over the years. Yeah. But sitting there listening yeah. to, you know, yeah. we had a homecoming dance at so-and-so. We had yeah. a rally. We had... Yeah. It, it just, we all know that happens. Yeah. Give me something unique that has happened at school that I, the right, board, exactly. the superintendent, the executive cabinet would like to hear. Like, for example, we, the senior class last year raised enough money for stained glass windows in the library. They're up, they're beautiful, and this is what it's given us. Or we had a student, uh, we had an alum come back who's made a couple of movies, and mm -hmm. he talked at lunchtime to a group of students about... And it's that sort of thing that I, mm -hmm. that uniqueness that gives you a deeper understanding of what's happening beyond the dances, the rallies, the games, the spring musical, and so on. So, I so agree. I, I think uh, that uh, Sean, Dr. Bolton, is on onto a, a really mm -hmm. great next step. Mm -hmm. Is um, how do you prepare these students to be good representatives of their school and of the district? And one of the things that really worked well in AUHSD was that Disneyland provided the training. Mm. And so, oh, yeah, and so uh, they would come out and then the school would buy the blazers for the students mm. uh, and uh, they get fitted. They were custom made for them so that mm. they would look professional. Um, and um, then Disney, kind of almost like uh, our, um, our um, uh, scholars, our Simon scholars mm -hmm. get trained in uh, manners and uh, how to work in, with the public and how to begin Parliament conversations. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, how to speak properly. Yeah. Um, so we would probably want want to do something like that 
once they are identified, get them through a training so that when they come here, they know what the vision of the principals is, is to give a, a report about the spirit and, and the heart of the school yes. as much as, you know, the great activities. Mm -hmm. uh, but more importantly, what what is meaningful at your campus? Mm -hmm. I also think it would be important for the board when they're considering, when you want student feedback, maybe we need to identify a theme. You know, right now we're, we're working very hard and, and Mr. Lee Sung's taken the lead on this issue of uh, wellness, you know, being mm -hmm. emotionally and, and, and mindfully well and, uh, taking care of yourself and us taking care of kids. Uh, you know, perhaps we can pick a theme where we say, you know, these are topics that we mm -hmm. would really like you to get feedback on us. Um, how is the pressure at school? Mm -hmm. uh, what, do you, what, you know, how are the, how, I mean, do you feel like you're being treated fairly mm -hmm. when you turn in work and, are, and you're graded? Uh, there's a, they could be a voice for a lot of the kids who mm -hmm. uh, don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, these are some topics that we can brainstorm with the board and with the principals at another meeting and say these are the things we really want to hear from you. And then they can come and look at the agenda. We can point out which ones those are. And they can come ready and armed uh, with, their, with, their, with their ideas and their like thoughts. That. Also, couldn't the students themselves take a look and say what are the issues, you know, when you get them together and they, they have a pre-meeting with you and say what are the, what are the, what do I really, what is really going on? What do I really want to focus on? You know, and maybe they, all, they have some ideas. I mean, I remember mm -hmm. one year was the food. Do you remember that? No, the food every oh year. Oh my God, the, let's <laughs> talk about the food. And as a result, we started having some of the carts, the a la carte items, the smoothies was one of, yeah. With the number one thing, the number one, our very yeah. first meeting that we had. Oh my God, zero was dollars. no student teachers in the classroom. <laughs> Really? That was number mm -hmm. one. That was one, and then student, uh, and then years ago it was uh, zero tolerance policy. Yeah. Get Telling our that. parents to stop being our friends and be parents. That's right. At Lincoln Elementary School. Well, I think that those are all, I mean, how we figure this out, it's going to be uh, and kind of like we'll make it up as we go along the first year. Mm -hmm. um, also, I still want to remind you that um, we don't want to have too many meetings for these students, no. uh, you know, and so perhaps uh, we communicate via email and share with them and give them, show them the agenda, highlight what topics mm -hmm. we'd like feedback. And we can ask them what topic hits you mm -hmm. that you want to share your thoughts. So we can do that. Mm -hmm. I just want to try to make it convenient for them. Um, you know, I know they're in their senior year and they, and, and that, you know, their workload isn't like it is the junior year. The junior year is incredible. Uh, so you really don't want juniors. Sophomores maybe don't know enough yet. Um, uh, so the senior year is the right year, but I also, you know, we also be mindful that they've applied to colleges. Mm -hmm. They've got to keep their grades up. They're still finishing up, and they've got to keep, you know, make sure that they don't uh, make fatal errors. Mm -hmm. We do have students who have their uh, acceptances pulled because they don't meet the GPA in the last semester. Mm -hmm. And we don't want this to, so we have to be mindful of that. So well, what, what, what would you think about this? I'm just throwing this out, um, see if it sticks. Um, what about just having them come to one meeting a month? I was going to say the same thing. I agree. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're, they come, they're only at one board meeting, but there's a dedicated time on the agenda that is specifically, and it may be just, it may be just more than three minutes. It may be. I don't know, 15. Well, maybe that's when we bring it's, forward it's some of these things, maybe. And when we're doing the agenda, we we were mindful of things, of putting things on at that particular month at the first meeting that affects students, if possible. What do you well, think I of that? Well, you know, uh, Russell's advice is ringing in my ears. It's good to start slow and small. And that's what and, I was just going to say. Then, I don't feel a gun to our head yeah. to have it ready by fall. I mean, I, I think that in order to do it right and get the buy-in, I think that's going to be the tremendous. So I, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with, yeah. you know, um, we don't have to rush. No and if we, if sorry to interrupt, but if mm -hmm. we, if we mm -hmm. do start slow and small, which is great feedback and advice, but we are tasked with finding mm -hmm. some unique students, unique in the sense that they're the ones that are passionate about mm -hmm. government, about representing the school, and about giving reports of significance. 
the mm -hmm. same time giving sound feedback, not lobbying, mm -hmm. right. then that, so give us the opportunity to find those students because they're out there. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, the summer happens so quickly, ASB is off and running. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, we've got two student reps that show up and mm -hmm. so give, give us the time and in May and June. So, yeah. what, do you think the first quarter? So, would it be? Would it be? I think it'd be probably feasible to say the shoot for the end of the first quarter because then your kids are getting their, getting their feet wet. They're they're settling down into their yeah. senior yeah. year. So that would be. A, but, oh, I'm going to interrupt. I'm Go sorry. Uh, about I agree with Sean. Uh, for the reason he's saying let's do it now mm -hmm. uh, because one we're looking oh, at juniors well we know the juniors now yeah you know uh, um, and their teachers know them mm -hmm. and uh, and and when you start the beginning of the school year there's so many other priorities mm -hmm. uh, and all the other key leadership groups are getting their leaders in place now so they mm -hmm. like Sean said they hit the ground mm -hmm. running so you want to start it start it now but when would they get appointed we do the interview process when so June so they would take on the job starting in September, or do you want to wait? Would you prefer to wait until December? I, well, I'll just say uh, the one of the challenges that we're going to have. Uh, first is going to be expectation setting and expectation changing. Um, exactly. Because, uh, you know, in all honesty, right now this is a um, mm -hmm. it's a task that is placed upon a, mm -hmm. a student representative, whoever is put in the um, public relations commissioner. Uh, at Estancia, mm -hmm. owns the uh, the responsibility of coming, and it, it's you, you can tell we've missed several. We've got mm -hmm. some logistical reasons. You know, our, our mm -hmm. students uh, work, and uh, most don't have cars, so uh, there's some burdens on them. But it's a task. Mm -hmm. We're trying to now change the uh, the expectation, so it's an honor, mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be going from you know who's the one of 30 ASB kids who was put into this uh, assignment to. Now we're going to advertise mm -hmm. and try and recruit from the entire student body, uh, or at least all of the junior class, who's going to be one or the one representative to be considered uh, mm -hmm. for this position. We're going to have to I, change those expectations. We're going to have to define what the position is. Mm -hmm. How often do they meet? Mm -hmm. How long is the uh, expectation? Is it talking for five mm -hmm. minutes on a theme? Is it staying uh, and providing uh, input for the whole duration? I like the idea of identifying the person in June so they can be ready to roll in September, but I'm still not sure what we're actually expected to do yet. Exactly. Alone. How See, I, and I guess change that, the yeah. expectations yeah. for my students yeah. because yeah. Yeah. right now they're, this is just an assignment that they get and they obviously don't do well. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I, that's my just idea. one thing to remember: they don't start in September usually anyway right. with us. I think, Sherry, what is it? The second meeting in October. Oh, okay. so we are going to start. And I guess that's my, that's where I'm coming from is because I'm I'm sitting. Okay, so you're a senior. You you you've already you've already set your class schedule up. I mean that they're they're doing that now, mm -hmm. right? So they have to weigh in all of that, and so then comes September. Now they're settling in. I I think going slow and saying that giving the giving you all the t the the school the opportunity to take a look of who's settling down and give it an, an, a point. Hopefully we could get this, we could appoint so that by December they could go to see it, they could go to CSBA. If, we, if that's one of the expectations, we would take them to CSBA. Mm -hmm. But uh, give them the time, I mean. Well, if yeah. I may take some liberty and just hearken back to my days mm -hmm. on the campus. Mm -hmm. um, here's, here's my fear of waiting till September. There, you open and you're hitting the ground running. And you are en enrolling kids, you're checking class size, you're balancing your sk master schedule, you're balancing your classes, you're making changes if you have to. If you're over-enrolled, you're hiring a new teacher. If you're under-enrolled, we're trying to figure out how to support you and still keep you within your <laughs> FTE. Um, there's a lot happening in September. It's a difficult, difficult task, in my opinion, for principals to do this in September. I would say, as I remember, spring being my favorite season, not because... Okay, so you're taking even slower. I would say we take spring to think about possible candidates, um, and you can do one of two things. You can 
uh, recommend in June and the board can interview in June and then the kids know for September they're going to be very I, they're going to be very busy in September and this would be a difficult task for them to do so I would recommend we go through the process in the spring and it's going to be the first year it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be, be great yeah. that's what I mean. it's <laughs> going to be I didn't think that was I, I looked at that as not being slow I was <laughs> I thought slow would be slow down the process and give it some time, but you're talking about I'm talking speeding about, it up and then I'm, going slow. I'm talking about what, as I remember my schedule, what, what's more, what I could do, what I, when I had more time to do Not this really work. So you want to speed it up. Uh, go ahead. I agree. Except, uh, the start of the year is busy. Uh, the end of the year is a nice time to allocate. Um, I, in my mind, going slow is like really figuring out what do we want from them. The criteria exactly. You know, what's the performance criteria we expect them to do? Uh, what's going to be our criteria to select a person who can do that? Yeah. How you know, it's kind of backing the dog up. Um, if we're going to do all that in June, um, we better identify by June. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not slow. Uh, it's uh, it's not, but you know, I also don't think we need to reinvent the wheel because there are criteria already established in other school districts we can borrow from. And I think that what we could do is come up with the draft, share it with the board, and then ask Dr. B to take it and share it with the principals, and we get feedback. And then yeah. I don't want to re I don't think we need to create our own document. Um, I am, you know, in doing my dissertation, I didn't create anything new. I borrowed from every researcher that was <laughs> that was credible. Not you know, original work. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and if you look at, and anybody who looks at a doctoral study or any kind of analysis, first thing you do is you look at the uh, references to see who they're quoting, because mm -hmm. that tells you whether they're good work or not. Mm -hmm. So I say we look at what other districts have done, build a criteria, and, and then have some discussions so, and see if we can. So just humor me on this, because I'm looking at, okay, yeah. so we're starting May. May is next week. Mm -hmm. So two weeks, how long are you going to plan on coming up with the criteria and all of that to borrow time two weeks so in the meantime weeks, yeah. so are we going to be recruiting word june one <laughs> I, 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 i'm just trying to figure out <laughs> I, I mean I, i'm just saying okay we want to get this done by june let's work on the boards how the board schedule works may may Here, here's one. what's here's what'll happen so i'm looking at if slowing the sucker this down, down to like next year exactly. maybe we should do it and next you know year what will happen? in the spring next may next march we'll start talking about it again no, i mean no no no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that i don't I'm think saying this is perha brain surgery. perhaps what we're doing is we look at <laughs> appointing keeping it the way it is mm. until through but work on it and recruiting we won't for work on second it, sem for second semester. So we're appointing for second semester. Okay, so let's just work on the timeline. When it when May is the one. Tree. May one is next week. We yeah. Two weeks, superintendent, you're gonna get be doing this. Oh, in the meantime, we've got those data chats. Oh, that's okay. You guys are all planning. So May between May one and May fifteen. We are going to be developing the criteria application. May 15th to May 30th, oh, there's Memorial Day. May 15th to May 30th, you're gonna be recruiting. June to June 21, three weeks, board is going to interview 15 candidates. To, uh, let's say there's two candidates per, per, per school, that's uh, 14 interviews in a matter of two, so that's one interview a day. In the meantime, what are we we day? well, I mean, I don't know <laughs> no. if there's a group of three of us. Okay, okay. And then you have, a, you, have you have a, three people interviewing the candidates. They may be all in one day, but there may be some activities that are going on, closing out the So the maybe day. two days then two days. you could do I, it. I, I'm just, yeah. you're just playing the devil's advocate. I, I don't view that as taking it slow and deliberate. I view that as rushing okay. and putting a lot of pressure onto our principals as they're closing out the year and graduating our seniors and moving on. Okay. I don't see us doing this within six, it's six weeks. We've got six weeks. Okay, so can I say something now? Um, I believe that you can get the framework of this by, by 
looking at the, I could, I could mark this up, and you could too, in an hour, and come up with a framework that um, we can agree on. Do we, if, do we have to wait to a meeting to agree on it? Can we just agree on it? Because we have a subcommittee. Um, it, we come up with something, we, um, everybody gets a copy, we kind of mark it up. What, uh, the slow part of it, to me, is not worrying about it being absolutely perfect. Not worrying about ha it having everything in it, but to find a basic, kind of simple, simple starting point. Um, put something out, I think we could put something out in two weeks. It goes to, um, it goes out to all the kids and um, see what happens. See if you get, maybe you're not gonna, maybe nobody's gonna apply and then we have to rethink it. You know, maybe we have to uh, do a bigger PR thing next year and start it earlier, but just kind of see what we get. Um, if we get 10 applicants brought forward, that would give the principals at least a week to see if any, I mean, it would be like a, maybe a two week turnaround. And then we just would interview them, like three people, yeah. in a couple days, and, and there you go. I, I don't I, know why it has to take. Like, I'm a just whole worried year. about false expectations. What are the expectations that we're placing on our child on our children? What are we asking them to do? And I think that That's, takes a lot longer than okay. an hour uh, an hour meeting and slamming something out because we've all talked about different things. Is the expectation that we want them in uniform? Do we want them in uniforms? Is that something that the the board or you know blazers and mm -hmm. nicely? Mm -hmm. Is that an expectation that they're going to be coming in business attire? What are the expect? I I'm just, I'm saying we got six weeks. Is six weeks enough time to to communicate mm -hmm. to to our student body the expectations that we are elevating this to a very prestigious position? Mm -hmm. um, this can year, we, sort of try? kind of prestigious, but not. I, I just don't want to backtrack and give the kids the, uh, the expectation that they're going to, it's something fabulous, and then we're flying by the seat of, I'm just, I'm just worried that if we're going to, I'm just looking at saying, wait, maybe we just do this and we appoint, the expectation is by the spring semester we will have had, we will appoint. Of 2019? Yeah, so we'll do we'll do the appointment and then but we can do the recruiting everything. So like so I would tell you that. So they the first term is a is a is a half year okay, term. But but if you're looking to one of the draws, I think is can students put this on their applications right, and their applications are due in November. Yeah. So your seniors are. Mm -hmm. So I'm I've been thinking mm -hmm. in the back of my mind, how do you make this a prestigious like mm -hmm. as as Mike said. Mm -hmm. And they have to be able to put it on their applications. Here's what I think they the can do it now. So here's what I think so about them do it. you know um, when Kirk was the was a baseball player, he wanted to hit the ball every time he went up to bat. Why did he want to hit the ball every time he went up to bat? Because that's high expectations. Um, I think what we can do is have high expectations, but the reality of it is, if he hits the ball three out of ten times, he's an awesome baseball player. Okay, uh, we can sit here and talk about these things and adjust as we move along. It may be better if, once we start working on this to delay it for a year. Oh, I don't want to delay it for a year, but I don't think that there's any reason why we can't have the same type of process for the first semester with the expectation that it's going to change. So the kids that would be appointed in the first semester are going to still be able to put their app, their name on their application, but their job changes okay. in in in, Jan, in the second semester. So we've we've actually moved it up to the next level in Jan, in Jan, whatever. Yeah, I, I, and I I just harken well, back. I, it's okay. Yeah, to, it's to, fine to with me. Things. I'm just worried about you guys. <laughs> I'm worried about the children not, putting additional <laughs> way a lot of pressure on these children. You know, yeah. if I can add add to uh -huh. this, um, I I believe the moving slow, the timeline, all that is really going to be predicated on what we decide to do and what we decide to do differently. Okay, so, exactly. so it's very hard to be talking about something very uh, ambiguous right now because we don't know exactly what that is. I, I think the one thing, if, if I was a high school principal as I was before, the, the concern that I would have, and I didn't hear this point, is what, what systems are currently 
in place at the school, and more, more so than systems, that's the wrong word. What, constitu what, what does the student constitution say, what does the bylaw say at the sites in their selection process of who has been appointed to come to the board meetings? Uh, I want to be sensitive to that. I wanted to say that with our principals here mm -hmm. is that they just can't go back and say to their student <laughs> governments, oh, by the way, this whole section of your, con of your constitution goes out the window because we're going to change it. They, they have mm -hmm. to work with the government in terms of how mm -hmm. that person is selected. So No executive orders? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, not necessarily in this okay. world. Really? But, but I, I think what we have heard, and I, I um, know that there's some themes that are coming through, is that we definitely want to have our student board representatives have a more meaningful role mm -hmm. in the process. I, I think that's great. And I think what Dr. Navarro said a little while ago is that that, that role can actually be done very quickly. Mm -hmm. That could be one piece of this, is to give them a topic to go back and seek input from a variety of students, not just their friends, not just ASB, which they could do very easily, mm -hmm. but the hard part as a leader is getting a, a representative mm -hmm. voice from their student population yeah. to come back on a topic to report to the board. I, I think that's a fabulous idea mm -hmm. that can get to the uh, feedback that I think the board is looking for in the student reps. So something like that, and this is again just one example, can be done very quickly and easily. Okay, so that kind of change is easy. A structural change in terms of, of pulling out what has been established uh, expectation and practice may be a little harder to do overnight. So again, when we're talking about timelines, it kind of depends what it is. I think with this discussion, I, I think there can be a very deep discussion now with principals, with Dr. Baumeister, myself, Dr. Navarro. We can come back with, I think, what's doable with a timeline. Okay, based on what we've heard from the board. And then I would just put I the agree. caveat in that we need to put a budget together, and that has to go into the budget. Too. I have that down, too. <laughs> yeah, we have a budget, and we need to identify who's the lead on who's going to coordinate this. But just very quickly, Mr. Lee Sung said it all, and just we, we have done a poor job of identifying students and presenting the proper students. Just give us a chance to get the right students up mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And that's the quick change Mr. Lee Sung is alluding to, the ones that we've got a, a great <coughs> grasp of what you want to see. Give us a chance to go back, identify juniors that can come back here as next year's seniors and represent. Okay, okay so just to clarify, because got mixed up. Just to clarify what you're saying, what I'm hearing is that we do it the same way as we, we pick the students the same way as we have been through ASB. Well, I, no, I would like to go look at some juniors See, on our I, campus I, and <laughs> tap them on the shoulder at lunch or at snack who I think wouldn't necessarily think of this position but would be perfect for it. And we're all trying to change our ASBs to better represent our student populations. We've all talked about that. We're all in the process of doing it, but there are certain individuals on campus that can certainly represent the school well. Give us a chance to find those students because there's a couple that are already coming to mind that would be fantastic. The other thing that Mr. Lee Song said that, so at First Ancia, if you are the coordinator of public relations, one of your assigned uh, mm -hmm responsibilities is to represent the school at the school board. Mm -hmm. That position was being filled as I speak. When I left, mm -hmm. the ASB interviews mm -hmm. were, were finishing up. Mm -hmm. So that person's been decided already for next mm -hmm. year. Um, you know, I don't mind, and they probably won't mind either. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, um, when he talks about the all of our schools do have ASB constitutions, mm. uh, I know what mine says. Uh, you know, so I, I have apologize for uh, who's been representing us, but it also comes down to the um, it's been a function of ASB and it's been assigned through that, that constitution. Um, we have to look at how we change that, how we change the expectations, what we're doing moving forward. Mm. Right. Uh, right. We can adapt to all those things, but there are certain. So, so with, with that being said, if each school has their own rules and, and bylaws to select that person and, and there are identified reps at each site, it does not stop the board from at that point taking all of those representatives, having another process to interview them for a higher role. 
So again, I, I think that's a fairly easy thing to do that can be done fairly quickly because how they rotate up here is really up to the board and what you want to do. But but their systems may, like, like uh, Mr. Okay, Holt already so said, again, be established. So just to clarify, what you're proposing is that we um, that these these representatives are picked the way they always have been picked, all except for principals are going to be more have more of a input or more of look at it more closely. Then we get this representative, and they start in in October or the end of September, and then. We put something out because we've had more time, and oh, this is really. I don't think. I don't think that's what they're saying. What are you saying then? I, well, I tell think me what, what they're saying. I, I, I thought that they were saying that they were in agreement that they wanted to move forward. That they would, right now, it's sort of in concert. One group is checking to make sure their bylaws are okay, and if we have to change that, that's something with ASB, right? But at the same time, the board is going to be working on criteria, selection, sort of mm -hmm. interview process, mm -hmm. da, 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 expectations. Da, expectations, so that they're ready to go in, I mean, basically ready to go in Next September. September. That's, I, I, I mean, I, I'm not in favor of that, but that's what I heard everybody say, that everything was going to be going right along now, sort of a dual process. You're going to be looking for, it's looking for and tapping students that are not necessarily we want, we want seniors. That's the one decision we made, right? They have to be a senior next year. They could or could not be coming from ASB. It's but, but as Michael just said, his persons are being chosen as we speak. Most of them are. Most of them are from what yeah, we've It's understood. not in our constitution. Our president just does it. Yeah, we haven't gone through it. Our bylaw stated is a commissioner position, but there is certainly enough time. There's a so as you can see, uh, like I said, change is not is not clean okay <laughs> so here's what i recommend and well we have we have an understanding really? we have a basic understanding <laughs> that we want to go with seniors okay that we want to make this i want to use mike's words mm -hmm. okay to go from uh, an appointed position to a position of honor mm -hmm. okay we want to work right now within the system and also to if we, whenever possible at the school uh change the system it may not be possible at all schools this year so what we can do is we can come back to you uh, probably by next Tuesday, we can give you a report as to where we are. We can meet between now and then with the principals, hammer something out, some points out. At that time, I can send you some applications and board members can circle what they like in those applications and I can put together a mock document and we can come back and give you a timeline and how it will work at each school. And then uh, it's kind of like what we, we what, this happens at schools all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, when you change standards, you can't make a wholesale change in everything. It's yeah. one piece at a time and it's a make do situation. I just didn't want it to be confusing because if <laughs> the ASBs all appoint their their person and now we're elevating it it's just very and then we're gonna interview their person and talk about a rejection they were already got it and we go no well but this year it might it. be it might be it you're might selecting be the person that sits at the dais only ah. it might be a hybrid too it might be that we're gonna it, we'll do the interview with mike's person yes. just so that we let we're we're gonna meet with all of them whoever we put whoever's yeah. in that we're gonna meet with them we're gonna yeah. provide them the training yeah. we're gonna provide them right these items mm -hmm. and we're going to and we'll interview them the same way and say here are the expectations now once they see the expectations and the criteria they may self-select to say oh oh I, I, I don't think I can do that and they may have to go back to and resign and and because okay. they can't meet the, yeah. the they can't meet their the qualifications well, right? yeah and it's not it's it's yeah. not going to be super smooth and clean no, but it will not. it's no. something we can bring to the board i think we've made it <laughs> way more complicated i think dr bauermeister has a comment okay. I, I just wanted to say that you know we've been apologizing for 
our student board reps. Our student board reps are doing exactly what we ask them to do. Absolutely. We ask them to come and give a couple academics, a couple athletics, and something yeah. the board could support. So if we up the expectations again, and I know the principals can do that, let these people know up front what the expectations are and how to present themselves, it'll be a much different product than we have right now. So, Because mm -hmm. again, these kids are really doing everything we ask them yeah, to right, do. Right. We're asking them to do something different and our kids can rise to the occasion. And, and I want to add to what Dr. Baumeister said and, I was, and Michael and I were talking. A lot of these kids that are, um, whether they're appointed or through the committee or just, okay, you're the president, you're it, mm -hmm. they have a thousand other pos op op responsibilities. So if all of a sudden they learn mm -hmm. going into the school year, hey, this is, we've upped the ante. Mm -hmm. If they say, look, hey, I can't it's do okay. this one job, I've got 15 other jobs, so hey, I'm going to pass the baton, mm -hmm. then we can help find the, yeah, the next exactly. person. So it's kind of, and, and then that may lead in, it kind of expedites it, but then, you know, Martha, kind of fits your me. Then, then by next year, we've got a better system that now it's a very. This is defined, the first step. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, but I think we go ahead and move forward with then with whoever, whether they're already appointed or they were elected or whatever, <laughs> to say they meet with you guys and say, okay, here's our expectation, and let them opt out, right. and then and then we then help come back and backfill. Provide them the opportunity to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No reflection on no, them. We, we just changed yeah. our minds. Yeah, yeah. And, and, <laughs> I just want to make sure that they, I, you know, I don't want to hurt the kids. We well, said well, that well, an well, hour ago. Do this, so now <laughs> you're changing the rules. Okay, okay, 419. We, we got to okay. go. I'm okay. getting a headache. Thank you, guys. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. As if you didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> uh, so do we, we go into closed session now? Yes, close okay, go, we're going into closed session. I okay. see no speakers. No. No cards. And Dr. Diagostino is going to be with you first. You don't have to read anything. Um, call the meeting to order April 24th, 2018. We're going to um, start with opening ceremonies, moment of reflection, and pledge of allegiance to the flag. Um, and the pledge will be led by Vance. Okay, so the first item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Move adoption. Second. Okay, I'm sorry, was that? Second, first. Second. Okay. And Davenport second. Okay, so um, the adoption of, of the agenda is moved by Ms. Yelsey and seconded by Mr. Davenport. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Next is the uh, adoption of the minutes of um, April 10th, 2018. Move adoption. Second. Okay. Uh, the adoption of the minutes is moved by Ms. Yelsey and seconded by Ms. Black. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, moving on, um, recognition of CSEA Employee of the Year. And so we have Christian. President Snell, members of the Board of Education and Dr. Navarro, tonight we are recognizing four classified employees as part of the California Classified School Employee of the Year program. This was established to highlight the contributions of classified school employees who support the education of public school students from preschool to grades 12. The overall purpose of the program is to identify and honor exemplary classified school employees. Newport Mesa's classified employees are vital members of our school community. They play key roles in creating a positive school envi environment that promotes student achievement. 
This evening, I'm pleased to assist the board in honoring our classified employees who have been selected to represent Newport Mesa in the California Classified School Employee of the Year program. And also tonight, we have personnel commissioners Ken Wayman, Susan Meyer, and Tris Ailey, who are also here to assist with the honors. Meticulously planning and coordinating the production and service of more than 700 high quality meals each day, always with kindness for all and a joyous, positive attitude, Newport Mesa's Classified Employee of the Year in the Child Nutrition category is an inspiration to both coworkers and students. An accomplished cook and baker, she's excelled at each and every position, location, and challenge she has encountered in the district for more than 25 years. Passionate about her job, she is a thoughtful and collaborative leader of a team of eight who has earned tremendous respect for all who have the privilege of working with her. Furthermore, she has made a strong impact on the students of our school district, not just through her nutritious meals, but also through her ability to give them a sense of community, respect, and belonging. Always thoughtful and gracious, she is more than deserving of this award and the recognition it brings. Congratulations, Nutrition Services Assistant 3, Patricia Sanchez. Mesa's Classified Employee of the Year from the Office and Technical category is known for her solutions-oriented approach to resolving complex budgetary issues and her continual enhancement of her knowledge, expertise, and responsibilities in her position. But what makes her truly stand out is her ability to connect with people with different personalities, needs, and budget knowledge levels, empowering her to form strong professional relationships through her empathetic manner. In addition to her lifelong learning and cooperative nature, she's also deeply involved in the community. As a member of the Assistance League of Long Beach Cameo Mentoring Program, she provides one-on-one -on -one mentoring to area high school and community college students. With her mastery of technology, tireless attention to detail, and keen ability to simplify systems and procedures, she has proven to be an invaluable asset to the district who is deeply involved in managing programs that directly impact our students, as well as a caring and charismatic team player. Congratulations, accounting assistant, Daniela Logan. Creative, animated, and a tireless advocate for her students, Newport Mesa's Classified Employee of the Year from the Paraeducator Instructional Assistance category has been an important and significant positive influence on the district's students since 2006. With remarkable expertise and ingenuity, she has incorporated real-world skills into everyday lessons for those with special needs and has successfully integrated general education and special education students in countless activities and programs. She has a knack for staying endlessly positive, calm, and supportive, as well as finding ways to incorporate teachable moments in the most unlikely of circumstances 
like say a water intrusion evacuation at Kelly Brook, <laughs> demonstrating outstanding leadership and modeling essential skills for students and colleagues alike. With her considerable talents, hard work, and positive attitude, it was not surprising to hear a family member praise her ability to bring a smile to their son's face or for her selfless participation in a four-day, three-night outdoor science camp where she ensured that her student participation in every camp activity. This remarkable employee embodies the values and ideals we all aim to teach our students and children. Congratulations, Special Education Instructional Assistant Maria Gomez. Possessing an infectiously positive attitude and exceptional ability to quickly and accurately manage multiple complex tasks, Newport Mesa's Classified Employee of the Year in the transportation category consistently finds ways to better meet students' needs while also keeping the best interests of her colleagues in mind. From her days as a school bus driver who utilized older students to help seat and monitor behavior of the younger students, to mentoring and training new drivers in her current position, to being accepted into the district's classified leadership institute, she has consistently demonstrated her distinguished leadership abilities for the betterment of students and the employee alike. Just as importantly, she has cultivated close relationships with the special education department to help accommodate students with ever-changing and challenging schedules. She participates in the Bus in the Classroom program that teaches students with special needs lifelong skills and independent mobility. And year after year, she goes above and beyond as a volunteer in the annual Halloween haunt, which brings the students from our Mod Severe elementary programs to the transportation department to trick or treat. Hardworking, inclusive, collaborative, thoughtful, and considerate are all words that have been used to describe this employee of the year. And she's also been selected by the Orange County Department of Education to represent them at the state level. So congratulations to school bus cover driver Francine Harms. <laughs> So I want to thank the board for the opportunity to congratulate and recognize our Newport Mesa 2018 Classified Employees of the Year. And tonight I would also like to recognize and celebrate an extraordinary contributor, participant, and supporter of the Newport Mesa school community. Some of you may not know that he was a teacher at Adams Elementary School from 1965 to 1971. When submitting his resignation from teaching in order to pursue a career in law, he stated, I don't know whether or not I'll have the opportunity to teach full time in the future, but it is my hope and intention to be involved in the lives and education of young people throughout my life. The experiences, personal and professional, over the past six years were of great satisfaction at the time and in the future should be an invaluable resource. He then proceeded to serve on the Newport Mesa Unified School District's Board of Education from 1979 to 1991. And since 1998, he continues to serve our community as a board appointed designee to the Personnel Commission. I thought it was important to acknowledge, celebrate, and honor this remarkable gem in our presence. I know he's not going to be happy about it, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> and I would like to point out that he has indeed, in an exceptional and distinguished manner, been involved in the lives and education of young people. Oh. Getting teared up. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> 
throughout his life and has skillfully utilized all of his experiences for the benefit of our community. It is a great honor and with immeasurable appreciation that we present to Ken Wayman this pen, a small token of our recognition of his 20 years of service to the commission and gratitude for the fulfillment of his hopes and intentions of a lifetime of support and involvement. We are all better for his outstanding contributions. That concludes the presentation. So we're breaking through this assumption. Okay. Yeah, I think you can take a five minute oh, okay. break for reception. Thank you. That was a wonderful presentation, and and you actually surprised him, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It did work. Or you wouldn't. I, I yeah. Or you wouldn't come, right? Okay. So we're going to take a little break for. Uh, there's a reception outside to honor um, these employees mm -hmm. and Ken. And uh, so, what, a 10 minute, 10 minute break? We'll be back at um, 6.26, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> A minute late. Excuse me. Excuse me. We're calling the meeting back to order. Thank you. Okay. Um, so moving on, we have student board member reports, and we're going to start with Van. Oh, Van, why don't you start with? Where'd Van go? Oh, we're going to start. We're going to start with Aaron. Okay. Hello, member of the boards. Uh, my name is actually Calvin. I'm just filling in for Aaron oh. right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's um, why you look so okay. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Um, so we were very pleased with our spring spotlight that happened this Thursday before break. Um, it was a great festive event where we got to show off basically how great our high school and middle school is. Um, with sports, we had um, our cheer team make it all the way to uh, CIF for stunts today. They actually lost, but at least they made it. <laughs> and then um, a big congrats to Felicia and Taylor Crenshaw. Um, you might have heard of them. They're kind of mm. Costa Mesa athlete gods. <laughs> yeah. um, they both, um, Taylor's heading to UCI, and Felicia will be signing with SDSU. And their signings are uh, this Thursday, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then our Costa Mesa Middle School is getting ready to open Music Man Junior, and that's going to open this Friday night and run through Sunday. Tickets are available at the box office. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin. <laughs> Lucy. Are you Lucy? <laughs> Maybe you're not Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> next. I'm going to say next. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Lucy Dimitrik, and I'm representing ECHS tonight, Early College High School. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, today, our juniors began taking their SBAC tests in English language arts. Um, testing will continue this Thursday, and uh, our SBAC math tests will start two weeks from today. Sorry. 
Um, while the other schools were on spring break last week, we had a very busy week at our school. Monday through Thursday, we held our class competition spirit games during lunch, with Friday being our last house competition with the oh-so-popular dodgeball matches against the <laughs> staff members. Um, last Wednesday, the Orange County Register of voters representatives were present to assist our 16 and 17 year old students to prevent sorry pre-register as well as our um, 18 year old students to register to vote last friday we held a moment of silence at the beginning of the school day in remembrance of the 13 victims of the columbine high school shooting that occurred 19 years ago on that same date Last Friday was also the second student shadow day of our year for students who are interested in attending ECHS in the future. This Saturday, we're, we will be holding our prom at Classic, sorry, Crevier Classic Cars Vintage Car Museum. The theme for our prom is Great Gatsby and everyone is very excited. Next week on May 3rd, we will be holding our third and last ECHS information night at 6.30 p.m. for all students, as well as their families who are interested in attending ECHS in the future. We are still accepting applications, which can be picked up either at our office, um, at all our district's middle school offices, or you can download it from the school website. Lastly, we're proud to report that over 38% of our student body has a cumulative non-weighted academic GPA of 3.5 or higher at this time. These students, along with students who achieved excellence in displaying the pillars of character and community service, will be recognized at our annual awards night coming up, coming up on May 17th. Thank you. Great, good report. Okay, next, I can't see the name tag. Is it oh, Lauren, okay. Good evening, I'm Lauren Griffin, representing Corona Del Mar High School tonight. Um, upon spring break, our students, um, actually our college and career guidance specialists, hosted over 80 colleges on campus <coughs> during lunch. We had tables spread out over quad where students could go up and ask questions, get pamphlets, pamphlets about colleges. So that was super informative. Tomorrow is Secretary Appreciation Day, and ASB is especially excited to honor our awesome secretaries. And within the next couple weeks, students are getting ready for AP testing, and teachers are offering after school hours um, and extra study sessions. And lastly, tonight in sports, boys volleyball is playing at Northwood. Thank you. Great, thank you. Holly? It is Holly, okay. Um, my name oh. is Jordan. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm filling in for Holly. Um, <laughs> Good evening, I'm here representing Newport Harbor High School. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so far we've been planning our academic, or no, we've been planning our prom rally and prom. Mm -hmm. uh, we're having it at the Yost Theater and the theme is Old Hollywood. So we're gonna have like a red carpet and we've gotten like photography club to like, you know, make the experience like better and stuff. Yeah. Um, we had our academic rally, which is Grease themed to promote our upcoming play. It's at the end of April and the beginning of May. Uh, it's $5 for kids and $10 for adults. We had our Ensign visit and it went well. We just talked about how to like get involved and we had tours for parents and the kids. It was pretty much just like an overview of the school. We're having our AP and IB testing. Um, we've had college visits this week and our like pretty much the past month. Today we had Western Kentucky University and the University of New Hampshire. Our boys golf team had another league win against Huntington, I think it was two days ago. And then today during lunch, we had our Mix It Up Bridges meeting. It's pretty much uh, just a way to like get to know other people on campus. Uh, the club Bridges runs it and we just sit in like tables and we like set a timer and you like talk to them and then move. So it's just like a cool way to like meet people on campus and that's it, so thank you. What a great idea. <laughs> I'm not even going to try with a name. <laughs> it's Andrea. <laughs> okay, okay. So good evening, President Snow and Snell, sorry, and board members. I'm Andrea representing Estancia. So I want to start off that um, students are getting t are getting ready for AP testing within the next three weeks. Our seniors are starting their senior projects, which is due the beginning of June. And our Estancia uh, drama production is presenting Freedom, the original show, on April 27th, 28th, and also May 4th and 5th. 
It's at 7.30 at Barbara Van Halt Theater. And I want to announce that we have our first ever girl wrestler that won state champions for the women's freestyle um, wow. state uh, Sorry, Freestyle State Off-Season League for Team um, Ca California. She is a sophomore, and her name is Nayeli. I might butcher this, I'm sorry. Um, Riva De Dera. So yeah, she is a sophomore, and this is her second year uh, being a wrestler. And our, um, our wrestler coach is encouraging more girls to start coming out and just, you know, just being part of, part of the guys. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do they wrestle guys? They, they, just, can, they, they can, can for their same weight. She only wa lost once against one girl and lost two, but just to the girls. They were a little um, heavier than her, but she did, she did win a few competitions against guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Okay, Van. All right. My name is Van Final, though, as far as Starbucks is concerned. It's Dan, sometimes, oh. sometimes like Lan or something. Yeah. Regardless, my name is Van Fine. I'm representing Back Bay Monta Vista. Um, <laughs> And we don't have a big report today, considering uh -huh. we just had our spring break. Uh -huh. To date, Back Bay Monta Vista have had over 30 students graduate and complete all necessary coursework to earn, to earn their high school diplomas. Many of these students have transitioned into college and the workforce. In the Bulldogs staff versus student Olympics, the staff dominated in each of the four events, pie eating, dodgeball, balloon toss, and basketball, and took a decisive 4-0 victory. <laughs> And most interestingly, Mr. Trochio is excited to have collaborated this year with District Technology, Finance, m and and our community partner, the Church of Christ, who rents our facility, with regards to upgrading our NPR. After months of collaboration, soon our NPR will feature similar technology that the board features, and we are very excited to maximize it with our guest speaker series that runs every Monday at 9.30 a.m. Today we had a professional dietitian speak to our students about her career, and it was very well received. Thank Great. You. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now we have our, our new um, Harbor Council PTA president, Julie Link. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, President Snell, trustees, Superintendent Navarro, cabinet, and guests. Harbor Council is getting ready for California State PTA uh, convention starting this Friday in Ontario. A highlight is a gubernatorial education forum where six of the gubernatorial candidates will discuss their vision for California public schools. For anyone interested in attending, it will be on Friday afternoon, and it's a $25 for entrance. And we are sorry to report it looks like the family engagement bill is stalled in the Assembly Appropriations Committee. We are hopeful to continue uh, to propel it, even though it may not happen soon. It is important to help increase the success of our kids, and PTA will continue to support these efforts. And before spring break, Vicki presented the do's and don'ts of PTA mm -hmm. fundraising to the Superintendent's Parent Advisory Council. There are several good questions and a lot of interest. And as a reminder, our Harbor Council Honorary Service Luncheon is coming up on May 7th. And RSVP P deadline was April 20th. Mm -hmm. So if you have an RSVP, please tell, uh, contact Lisa Bowler or Treasure or mail in the um, RSVP mm -hmm. card. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Welcome. <clears throat> okay, uh, Dr. Navarro. Okay, we have our informational uh, uh, items, and uh, Mr. Lee Sung is going to update the board on uh, the is safety issues that he's leading. All right, good evening, President Snell, members of the board, Dr. Navarro, cabinet colleagues, and members of our public here tonight. Uh, I'm here to talk about, obviously, our most important topic. And I, I want to say that uh, when Dr. Navarro uh, spoke to me about focusing more of my time and efforts on safety, I gladly accepted that. That's something that I have personally always felt uh, was my highest priority, not only personally, because I enjoy being safe, uh, but wherever I've worked has always been the first and foremost priority that I always felt we needed to uh, focus on, whether it be assistant principal or principal or district level administrator. 
so it seems like wherever I go, uh, safety ends up following me, or I end up <laughs> seeking out uh, what we can do to make ourselves uh, safer at the workplace. So, um, so with that, I have dedicated much more of my time on safety in our district. And tonight I wanted to share with you some of the work that is being done. Uh, since we had our presentation uh, by Dr. Diagostino in front of the board uh, several weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago since the Parkland shooting, and uh, the board directed us to look at some immediate steps that we can do to make our schools and workplaces safer. So with that, I'd like to share with you some of the work that we've been doing, also to remind the board of some of the work that have been uh, done over the past several years, which I believe uh, has been commendable, but in the area of safety, there's always room for improvement. So with that, just a reminder, our most important priority is safety for all students, and we knew that, and we always focus on that, but I am also emphasizing the fact that we need to be focused on safety for our employees as well. And we identify that we have schools that obviously are our first priority, but we also have workplaces where we have employees that we also need to focus on. And how do we accomplish that? And that is being proactive and being prepared. And that encompasses many, many factors. Uh, also, and you heard this in prior safety uh, uh, presentations, the importance of partnerships and that we do have very important and solid foundations uh, or relationships with our partners and we want to maintain that, we want to enhance that, and we want to expand that. So with those two things in mind, I believe we can really focus and create a safe environment for all students and staff. Now, when I looked at safety functions in our district, and we actually started to hold safety meetings earlier this year, back in October, and I pulled together a group of administrators throughout the district and made everyone think about all the safety functions that we uh, have to focus on in our jobs. And a whiteboard was then covered with yellow post-it notes. And from that, we created a list, we categorized it, and we looked at areas that we needed to review and uh, work on. And so we've been doing that work actually all year long. These are just some examples. So when we talk about safety, yes, we're talking about drills and emergency procedures, but safety encompasses so many different areas. And the thing is that every single administrator on this campus and throughout this uh, district has multiple safety functions. Decisions that are made, for example, in HR has safety functions to it. Uh, decisions that are made in facilities, in the design and the planning, has safety functions in it and across the board. And that's our focus, will always uh, will be, and we need to make ourselves very much aware of that. So these are just some examples of some of the safety functions throughout the district. Okay, but with that being said, we do have to focus on certain areas. And what we did as a group over the next a uh, few days after the board directed us to come up with these is to create a comprehensive list of actions that we can take immediately over the next several weeks, over the next several months uh, to, to review and make sure that we're doing everything we need to make our school sites and workplaces safe. So here are some of those examples. The first area is positive school and work culture. And Dr. Diagostino, Student Services, did a great job of outlining how important the work is in that area. These are some examples. Our PBIS system, as you know, our schools are many years along in training and implementing a positive environment uh, for all of our students. Next is the bullying prevention. There are many new laws that are in place that we need to implement. We have gone, gone above and beyond in what we need to do to prevent bullying and take immediate actions when those are reported to us. Also, setting up a culture of restorative justice practices is very important. That people feel like they're being treated fairly even when they broke rules or did negative behaviors. Emotional behavioral support. Again, you see a lot of work that we've done in this district, and this has become such a focused area, not only here in our district, but throughout the country. 
with mental health issues and, and how that leads into very aggressive and violent behaviors at times. Also, immediate threat and risk assessments. And again, I, I don't want to repeat what Dr. D'Agostino shared with the board, but that is there with immediate follow-up. We also have done more training in sexual harassment, hostile work environment. And we, as management, have to do that biannually, every two years, and that is done. Uh, but we also started doing in-person sexual harassment training, where it's members of the management is in a group uh, with a trainer, where we can have more in-depth dialogue in terms of what that means. So we feel that we've beefed that up and that we will continue doing uh, training, but doing it in in-person settings. Also, I'm very pleased that we have brought on Challenge Success, and the board and our public is going to be hearing much more about that. Dr. Navarro, uh, after the tragedy over in Corona Del Mar, found this group who had been doing this work with schools, and I want to assure you that that work is already underway. They have met with the staff at Corona Del Mar. They are meeting with students in May to start hearing their voice. Uh, there is training in the summer that some leaders will be going to, and a cohort will be formed from Corona Del Mar. They will be um, implementing training uh, beginning in September. So a lot of work is being done. There's a student survey component of that, and through that data, changes will be made, policies will be, will be reviewed, but it's going to be based on the data that they collect. And we're very pleased to have this partnership and commit to challenge success for this coming year and years to come. We've also had training at Newport Harbor for their staff, and training is set at Costa Mesa in May, and we'll proceed to Estancia after that. Our school resource officer is something that the district has done for many years. And as we all see the media talking about arming staff members, uh, I will go on record by saying I do not support that and would never recommend that. But having trained police officers as part of our SRO program, who are members of the Costa Mesa Police Department and the Newport Beach Police Department, that is where we get our support, and we have that great partnership, and that's been going on for many years. We have one SRO assigned to each zone at this current time. One of the things that we heard was that we wanted to have more visibility and more presence at all of our zone schools, not just the high schools, but all of our zone schools. Uh, Dr. D'Agostino did meet with the SROs, and that is underway. And I'm happy to say that all of our elementary schools, with the exception of one, and that's pending, have had an SRO visit already this year. Uh, we also want to conduct training and drills, but do so in partnership with our law enforcement. And we've been actively working with them on one of the newest drills. Unfortunately, we have to practice what happens when we have an intruder on campus or a worst case scenario, an active shooter type of setting. So we've been working very closely with them on that. And these are the individuals that we work very closely with on many different uh, situations that arise. Next, we're looking at our physical environments to make sure that they are safe. And we always need to, and I want to say this because this is important, we don't want to create prisons. These are schools. But we want to balance that, therefore, with a welcoming environment. We want our parents to feel comfortable coming out. We want our students to feel comfortable, but we want to have appropriate safety measures. So that always needs to be kept in mind. We are currently uh, doing a site safety review at all school sites, as well as work sites. And that is uh, expected to be completed by May 10th. And we have Vlad Anderson as part of that team, along with Tim Holcomb and Tim Marsh, going to visit every site, where they will come up with site recommendations, and in the end, some overall recommendations for the entire district. And I'm also pleased to hear that if they see something right there on, on scene that needs to be fixed, they can submit that work order and get mm -hmm. that done right away. So they're not waiting until all of this is done, if something can be fixed mm -hmm. right away. Uh, the attention is to controlled, having controlled access at the campuses. 
And I also want to mention the importance of the ingress, egress, and the check-in and check-out procedures. So all of that's being looked at as well. Uh, our district has uh, been proactive in looking at fencing at our sites. We aren't complete yet. Dr. Navarro stated this in a prior meeting that we do need to look at making sure all of our school sites have appropriate fencing to control uh, access to campus. And we have had multiple uh, projects already completed. According to Tim Marsh, six projects have already been completed that are not only fencing, but also office configurations. And most recently, we were talking about some of our, our elementary schools that projects will be done uh, this particular summer. So that's currently going on. And when we look at recommendations, we want to look at recommendations, not just what's good for one site, but we want to make sure that if this is good for one site, we are looking at it through the lens of this must be good for all of our school sites. Okay. Drills, drills, and more drills. Um, I think prior uh, folks, you know, sometimes tend to, oh my gosh, you know, here we go with another drill. But I think in this day and age, we all understand the importance of drill and we're all saying the same thing. So we routinely conduct fire drills, earthquake drills, and lockdown drills. <clears throat> we need to review them, we need to update the uh, procedures, and we need to practice them. I remember myself as a principal, if we did a drill one day, and there were too many things that happened that didn't go as planned, we're scheduling another drill that following week. Okay? That's the kind of mentality I think we need to have, is we're learning from them, and that we are um, making sure everybody is doing their part. And if it doesn't happen again and we have to run that drill again, we're going to run that drill again because it's that important. Um, we do believe in the value of standardizing as many procedures as possible when that's practical. Sometimes there's a unique situation, a unique setting, uh, that we have to modify it, but overall we should be looking at standardized procedures with, with that. And that's going to be one of my roles is to review uh, those procedures. And like I mentioned earlier, we have to expand the training and the <coughs> drills to include <coughs> intruder alert. Uh, this has already occurred at many of our schools. Uh, they had been doing it, uh, bringing in their SROs. What we are now making sure that happens at all of our school sites and work sites. Uh, we want to be mindful that whatever drill we do and the terminology we use or a training video that we show is appropriate for the various grade levels. And then as I mentioned, the importance of a debriefing process, a protocol that we will make sure every site does after each drill. And I'm very pleased that we had for the first time an AED training for our Bear Street employees. Everyone may have never noticed, but there is a white box back there mm. with an AED. Mm. And uh, they're there. Uh, the board and the district had committed to purchase these for certain locations in all of our secondary schools and commend the district for doing that. And now we, we did the training. Even though it's very user friendly, there is something about actually seeing it being operated mm -hmm. that takes the mystery out of using that. And, and we believe that that uh, at some point, hopefully it never happens, uh, could and will save somebody's life. Communication. Anytime we're dealing with emergency, communications is always a huge factor. And if, if it's a major crisis and we have police and staff and students and parents, uh, involved, we have to have the appropriate communication system. So in order to make that work, again, we need to conduct drills. And we are going to be having a district-wide emergency communication drill for parents. We're going to start there on May 10th. And we are working out the details with that. We have been working hard to update all contact information with our parents so that they know that in the event of an emergency, our system has the ability to immediately send out a message via email, phone, good old fashioned phone, text, and uh, a mobile app if they download 
uh, our app. So there's many ways that they can be communicated with, but we need to make sure that we have updated and current information. We are also looking at having a district-wide anonymous reporting system. And this could be uh, a student uh, reporting a bullying activity by somebody and wants to do that anonymously. It could be a student in crisis or a friend that's in crisis. It could be vandalism. It could be a number of things. So we want to make sure that we have the comprehensive systems in place that uh, individuals can do that. We also uh, will be creating a web page on our district website dedicated to safety. And we always need to be mindful of sharing information that's legal and appropriate for us to share and responsible for us to share. And this is one of the hardest things as a, as a leader, whether you're a site leader or a district leader, is what information that can you legally send out and responsibly uh, send out. And you know we always want to give as much information to, to folks as we want as we can, but sometimes we're bound by several factors depending on the situation. Uh, I wanted to share with you a saying that we've been hearing a lot of lately mm -hmm. in this day and, and, and age. Mm -hmm. If you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. But as I was doing some research, I found a follow-up phrase to that, which I think is very appropriate: to <laughs> see it, say it. Don't spread it, report it. report it, okay? Sometimes the spreading of a, a rumor or spreading of information of somebody thought they saw something can create by itself a very dangerous situation, okay? So the, the phrase is see something, say something is absolutely great, but we want folks to report it, let the police, let the school officials, let us follow up on it, and the assurance that we have to provide is that we immediately take action. We do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, but, but to spread it without verifying anything is not uh, helpful. Overall safety goals. Uh, In-depth review of all of our safety-related functions. And there are many functions, as I mentioned earlier to assess our preparedness and improve practices, uh, supporting our school sites and work sites, updating policies and protocols as needed, establishing standard protocols where appropriate, review and research safety-related recommendations. We have been receiving many, many recommendations, and I appreciate that. And I've been telling everybody, we stay open-minded to that, we listen, but in the end, we have to decide what truly are the best safety measures for our schools and our district. And build and enhance partnerships. We have many partners out there who want to help us, who have expertise. I know I do not have all the expertise in safety. But I do know how to facilitate. I do know how to seek resources, pull people together, organize, and organizationally how we can bring all of this good information to make it work for our schools and our district. And most importantly is to report this, not only to the board, but to our staffs and to our public. That is how we build the trust. That is how we build the confidence that everybody needs to know when they come to work, when they drop their kids off, that we are prepared uh, for, for any type of emergency. So with that, our most important outcomes is everyone knows what to do and feels empowered and not fearful. Now, I used to tell my kids that it's okay to be a little bit scared because that's our body, that's our brain telling us, oh, wait a minute, should I be doing that? Should I not be doing that? Should I go there? Should I not go there? That is, that is a very important human function of our brains to keep us safe. So to be a little bit cautious is okay. We need to stay on our toes all the time. If we feel completely 100% safe, you know what, that little edge goes away and then that's when things mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. So we need to stay a little bit, a little bit fearful, but not to the point that we are overcome with that, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, some of the training that I've, I've seen, 
it's shocking. When people have to go through this training about an active shooter, it's scary. But I will tell you, by the end of the training, people are, fearing, are, are feeling less fearful, mm -hmm. more empowered, because you know what? I now know what to do, mm -hmm. and that's what's important. The next thing is that everyone has ownership and accepts the responsibility for safety. That is very critical. There isn't one single safety measure or initiative out there that is going to keep everybody safe. That does not exist. But making sure everybody knows what to do, everyone is part of the safety plan, uh, that is the most important thing for, for all of us. And finally, that we work together mm -hmm. and contribute to that caring environment. So that's it for now. Uh, I know there's many, uh, much more work to be done mm -hmm. and many more updates to give to the board and our public, but that's something just uh, to get started. Great, very yeah. comprehensive. You've, you've put it all together, what, we've, what we discussed, and, um, and so I'm, I'm pleased with the progress so far. Um, the, uh, the visits to the site with um, <coughs> Vlad is, so he's, like he's like a represent since he's a former policeman newport beach policeman Correct. he's um so do the sros go sometimes as well or is it you, you know some of the sros have gone to okay, visit sites kind of uh yeah. and that's what maybe you have heard of mm -hmm. uh, but what we wanted to do was to with the same team yeah. visit all of the sites so they're all looking at the same thing and then can give some overall recommendations. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I've, I've talked to some principals who had their SROs come and, and give them advice. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, we want to make sure we're doing this for all of our schools. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Any, any questions? Oh, Van has yes. a question. <clears throat> I was wondering, you were saying we would uh, review and change drill procedures. Do you have any ideas as to how you might change, like, a fire drill? Uh, yes. In fact, uh, there's some lessons learned from uh, the Parkland uh, tragedy related mm -hmm. to fire drills. Mm -hmm. So that is something that we are looking at. And, and, and by the way, I, I will, at certain points, um, uh, not respond to something due to safety considerations. So there are times where I will not give details uh, in public. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, so without going into further details, yes, we are looking at that <laughs> and always improving. Okay, but but I'd much rather be upfront with the board and our sure. public to sure. say that that's an area that we will not be sharing uh, in detail. Yeah, okay. exactly, and yeah. that and I, t we all understand that there's certain security issues you can't share with the public because they keep us more secure. So exactly. yeah, you don't want to okay. do that. Right. Thank you, Van. Oh, uh, Ms. DLC? Yeah, I just wanted to mention also that um, Dr. Navarro and Phil Agostino and I met with uh, the Chief of Police of Newport Beach, John Lewis, yesterday. And they are equally as concerned, obviously, with safety at all our schools and are open to looking with us at new things we might do in addition to, to having our SROs. and. We know they're stretched by going to the elementary schools, but they, they also feel that that's very important because that's when the SROs can first identify some kids who may be at risk. And so that's also important, but, it, but they, they are looking at, with us, some other options. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's a, and that's the beauty of the SROs, as we all know. I, I know Sometimes the public just thinks of the SROs as some, there's someone there to protect our kids, but they build such great relationships with the kids that they will tell the SROs things that they maybe wouldn't tell just a policeman that was on campus <coughs> they didn't have a relationship with. Right. So, Yes, yeah, so speaking of partnerships, yeah. <laughs> and I should have mentioned this in my presentation, that uh, we've also been meeting with our associations. Hmm. We... Uh, had uh, a meeting a few weeks back. We had our second meeting today with NMFT representatives, CSEA, and NMAA, along with several district administrators. And and you know, and we're we are just talking. It, it needs to be a two-way street. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the first two meetings we had were, were very positive, very productive, and we've committed to keep those going every two to three weeks, uh, as we implement some of these things. And it'd be very important to to work together. Okay. okay, thank you, Mr. Right. Lee Sun. Okay. 
any more informational? Or? I think that's it for today. Okay. okay. So we are going to go on to community input and um, I'm oh, just going to read. read. Okay. This isn't as long as what Martha reads. Do I just read this? Yes, yes. Is that what she reads? Oh, seems like it takes time. Um, this is an opportunity for the public to address the board on consent calendar agenda items or non-agenda matters within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. Each individual speaker has three minutes to cover one or multiple topics, and speakers may not cede unused minutes to other speakers. With board consent, the president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public comments, depending on the topic and the number of persons wishing to be heard. In compliance with the board policy and Ralph and Brown Act, the board is not permitted to take action on non-agenda items. When addressing the board, it is helpful if you state your name and address for the record. Okay, our first speaker is Jamie Thomas. Good evening, Dr. Navarro, President Snell, mm -hmm. board members and guests. My name is Jamie Thomas. I speak as a parent of California elementary students. I live at 3162 Barbados Place. At the last board meeting, safety was discussed hidden under the agenda item informational items. Be very easy to put a subheading that lists the topic that's to be discussed for that night so people have some information about going into the meetings. The discussion was informative and sounded comprehensive. However, in all of the people mentioned in the discussion as being involved in safety and how it's communicated to people, there was no mention of a vitally important component, parents. And this is accepting the meaning that was the information that was given tonight. After our own recent incident at California, parents were not notified of anything until a month after the incident occurred. And that was only after a majority of the parents saw multiple police, and district personnel at school one morning. Parents in the grades in which the incident occurred were not communicated with at all, other than to say conferences had been canceled. I feel it is pretty important to let parents know when the regular teacher has been absent and multiple substitutes are used for an extended period of time. Dr. Navarro, you yourself sent out an email on April 3rd stating, wait for official communication from your child's school or our district and avoid spreading rumors or unsubstantiated information. Communication didn't occur, and it's only human nature for people to discuss and speculate as to what they saw and heard when no concrete information is provided. All that could have been avoided with preemptive communication. The subsequent short terse emails that came long after the fact were at best half-truths, and at worst, let's call a spade a spade, they were blatant lies. As such, trust between all parties involved has been fractured and morale has suffered. We don't have the right to know everything due to privacy concerns, and we very well understand that. But we do have the right not to be lied to or condescended to, and that is exactly what has occurred. Thank you for your comments. Okay, um, Lori Smith. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lori Smith, a retired Newport Mesa teacher. Today, the, New, the Newport Mesa Community for Student Community Group shared with you, the board, the results of a survey which asked one question. Do you think Fred Navarro, superintendent of Newport Mesa School District, is exceptional? Out of a total of 328 who took the survey, 320 checked no, the superintendent is not exceptional. Of those, 103 wrote comments. The comments are remarkable because there are so many, but more because of their sincere crit criticism and the specific things they say. These are the words of real people, people from our Newport Mesa Unified School District community who have knowledge and firsthand experiences. They are people who needed an outlet for their feelings. In a lot of them, I hear the voices of demoralized employees. I come here to speak once again with sincere hope for positive change. 
First for our students, next for our teachers, former, my former colleagues, and for everyone else who touches our kids' lives. I urge you not to ignore or minimize their voices. They are deserving of your attention. And I'd also like to speak a little bit to safety. I appreciate um, Mr. Lee Sung's presentation and keeping the public informed. I would have, I think the audience, but I'll speak for myself, would have appreciated it being an agenda item. Because that way there's no give and take. Um, I do have a lot of questions. And so this way, again, the public can't really participate as well. Um, so moving on, I have concerns. I spoke to this before. It was always a concern when I was teaching. And I'm gonna rattle through them pretty fast here. Um, Will it be comprehensive? This is something it has not been. It's been fragmented. And many of our programs at the sites have been fragmented. Um, it's just across the board, it's been what I candidly would call a management style. So the fragmentation is still a concern, um, even hearing um, the presentation today. Um, will it be equitable, for example? We have um, an attempt at walkie-talkies right now. I appreciate the earnest attempts to do things right away. But walkie-talkies, some campuses are gonna be paying for them through you know, parent funding. Others are gonna be paid by the district. I personally feel safety is, it's the top of the list. It has to be paid by the district. It has to be equitable and the same at every site. I mean, that's inherent in the, in the word comprehensive. Um, Keep, I appreciated the student services. Student services has a lot in place, but again, there has to be, um, they have to be part of the team. There has to be comprehension. Um, what else do I want to say on safety? Oh, who are the experts? That's a big concern. Um, and I'll talk as I walk away, uh, but uh, Mr. Lee Sung, Tim Holcomb, uh, they are educators, they are Thank not you. experts. Thank so you. I want to see where the experts up. are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Marty O'Mara. <coughs> uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, school board, for getting the videos of the website, that's really great, <laughs> I appreciate it. I would like to get a comment tonight on your board consistently, consistently giving raises to executives. Do you ever check how much other school districts compensate their superintendents and hire executives? Dr. Navarro's mm -hmm. salary is being raised to 289,915 plus a $700 car allowance, $100 cell phone, and a $79,000 health insurance. A retirement, plus the $34,450 tax sheltered annuity. His salary is higher <coughs> than the largest school district in Orange County, which has 34,000 more students than Newport Mesa. He also makes only about 100,000 less than the LA Unified Superintendent that has a student population of 640,000 students. That's right. LA has 618,000 more students than Newport Mesa. Plus, you love to give money to everyone who is out sick or has some extra responsibilities. My husband was a, an executive in an international company, and he never received a bonus when people were out sick or they had additional assignments. He just worked longer. Dr. Romaro, I hope you gave, at least gave your secretary, Sherry, Snyder a bonus for all the time you were out because I know she had extra responsibilities. Bottom line, salary increase, increases are out of line. Money for excessive raises could be spent on safety, air conditioning, or smaller classes. My second comment is in regard to your stated interest in listening to parents, teachers, and the community. You have cut comments to three minutes with no second speaker allowed to complete the comments. I know for a fact that you have allowed specific speakers to extend their time. Do you wonder why parents or teachers do not want to speak at a school board meeting? How about the teacher at the last meeting that represented many teachers and tried to extend her comments? There were only four speakers, a total of 12 minutes of your time was spent. 
you could have extend, extended her time. It appears that it's more important for the board to hear about the AP testing that's coming out, or a sports event, or a pie throwing contest at a school, which is already on the website. We don't need to hear it in a board meeting. Or maybe it's more important to end the meeting before 9 o'clock than to take the time to really listen to the community. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe there were like 25 speakers. That's, that's, I don't know what meeting you were at, but, okay. Oh, this was, oh, never mind. Okay, Britt Dowdy. Good evening, President Snell, members of the board, Dr. Dr. Navarro, members of the cabinet community. I'm Britt Dowdy with the Newport Mesa Federation of Teachers. I wanted to give you an update from the uh, California Federation of Teachers convention that was held a few weeks ago here in the fine city of Costa Mesa. Um, and as you may know, the California Federation of Teachers represents a very broad set of educators. So it's not just certificated employees like our local, but it also represents classified workers, uh, higher education uh, uh, staff, whether they're at community college and universities, full-time and part-time staff across the entire state of California. It's a very broad set. So it's an interesting convention when you get all those different perspectives into one place and you're talking about policy and what people like and don't like it, it's, it's interesting stuff. Sometimes it becomes tedious, but it's quite interesting. Um, so NMFT has been a member of the CFT for uh, over 50 years, and this is the first time that it can, only the second time a convention has been held in Orange County, the first time in Costa Mesa, so we were pretty excited. Uh, we partnered with the other two Costa Mesa-based um, uh, unions, which are Coast, Feder uh, Coast Federation of Educators and Coast Federation of uh, Classified Employees at Coast Community College to kind of be a host partner uh, for you know, and be good ambassadors. And, and a lot of the people that came really liked coming to the Newport Mesa community. They valued, you know, being up, able to have neat places to eat and hang out there along Baker and, and Bear Streets. And uh, so they really enjoyed hanging out in Costa Mesa and felt welcome. Uh, there was, uh, I don't know why, but people were thinking, oh, well, we're not in LA and we're not in San Francisco. What's it gonna be like in Costa Mesa? And anyway, they had a good time and they felt welcome here. And uh, hopefully they'll come back again one day. Some of the notable speakers were uh, Assemblyman Tony Attorney Thurman, who is a, a candidate for uh, California's Superintendent of Public Instruction. Uh, Erwin Chimarinsky, who's a uh, congressional scholar, uh, who um, was the dean of UCI Law School, and now he's at Berkeley, was another noted speaker. Uh, uh, CFT also recognized legislators of the year, Assemblywoman Lorena Gon Gonzalez Fletcher and Senator Connie Leva. Uh, a large action was taken with the March for Our Lives in Santa Ana, where uh, the convention provided buses to take uh, pretty much the entire convention to participate in that rally. Uh, and there were some powerful speakers there, either students as well as some noted uh, politicians as well, and one of our local members. Um, there were a, a number of resolutions presented, uh, some that, that may be of interest locally are related to part-time faculty workloads and requiring charter schools to participate in STIRS because we are concerned about the long-term viability of STIRS. Um, and finally, to wrap up, uh, this weekend we have coming up um, CFT committees in which we uh, participate on educational technology, labor in the schools and climate justice, special education and retirement policy related to STIRS and PERS. And we look forward to continuing that service. And there are a lot of commonalities between what you do and what we've done. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dowdy. John Caldecott. Thank you. Uh, I'm here at the podium tonight to talk directly to the public. The courts recently forced the district to release one of the Mariner's Gold Ribbon Award investigation summaries and awarded me attorney's fees. The teachers initially sounded the alarm about embellishments in the application to HR. The HR office rejected their complaints without proper investigation and dismissed their concerns. Sound familiar? Next, teachers supported by parents went to the public to challenge the integrity of the award and demand an investigation. The records release confirmed that dishonest and misleading information about the school is, are contained in 10 different areas in the application prepared by the school administrator. This is a great school, 
and does not need phony awards. In essence, the district cheated on the application and still claimed the award. Would, what would happen to a student that cheated on grades and then, and then accepted a coveted academic award? To do the right thing, the tainted award should simply be returned to the state voluntarily. This is the third public records court case resulting in the district having to release records and pay a total of about $150,000 in yours and my attorney's fees. The board could have and should have directed the superintendent to hand over the records to the public without any expense whatsoever. The board has paid my attorney fees, but I have never received a penny, nor have I paid a penny. See Caldecott Info for more information on many different areas. Public records also confirm the board is knowingly allowing retiree Paul Reed to falsely claim he's an active employee to receive tax-free health benefits, $17,000 per year. This will go on for nine more years. The district claims vague contract language allows Reed his own special one-of-a-kind one loophole. Are false claims to gain a tax-free insurance benefit le legal? Why does the board keep letting the superintendent waste taxpayer money? Why is there a culture of fear and retaliation for questioning the superintendent? The fact is the public needs to know the board is powerless to stop the superintendent. The board is so out of touch, they give bonuses to the superintendent every year for doing an exceptional job. This is an insult to the public and takes money away from students. To close, please turn apathy into action, members of the public, and use your right to vote in 2018 to elect four new board <coughs> members, and in 2020 to replace three other board members. You have the power to elect a new board and hold them accountable to fulfill the duties and responsibilities of their office and to direct the superintendent. Thank you. Uh, Miss, uh, oh. Madam President, mm -hmm. I just would like to uh, make everybody aware that uh, we made a promise to the teachers of that school to maintain their privacy and confidentiality and have made every effort to uh, protect their privacy. They were promised by the outside investigator that their interviews would be confidential and held private. Uh, so any money that we spent was based on the ethical and moral responsibility that we have to protect our teachers and the interviews that they provided the investigator. Um, and one would think that, uh, every, that that is a recognized uh, standard uh, duty of an HR office. Uh, and, and, you know, there's not a whole lot much more to say after hearing that. Thank you. Okay. Um, Cynthia Blackwell. I'm going to read a true account of what happened in my classroom in the district's response. This falls under the heading of special needs, mental health, and school safety. For the protection of the students, I'm just giving them numbers. I'm reading paraphrased excerpts from a letter I wrote May 19th, 2015 to the administration in NMFT. This has been an extremely difficult year with a variety of behavior challenges. Each specialist, PE, music, science, would greet me with a barrage of complaints when I went to pick up my class. I ask over and over for the specialist to please email me for documentation for my records. I never received anything in writing despite numerous requests. I hear a litany of complaints about my classroom substitutes and others that have interacted with my students. I have so many fantastic students whose education has been repeatedly disrupted by the actions of a, f of a few. Several parents have expressed their concerns and frustrations about the behaviors they have witnessed or heard about from their own child. In October, I had a student move to another classroom to make room for a returning student to Kaiser. Number one was a known behavior problem. I was assured that testing would commence immediately on this child and support would be offered as the child couldn't sit in a chair, read, or write more than the first name. The testing for number one took months. Number one qualified under several categories. I was told at the IEP in February that number one would be moved to a special day class in the fall of 2015. Why wait until the fall? Answer was, so this child's learning would not be disrupted. What about the learning of the other 29 students? All the special ed folks that I have talked to agree that number one needs a full-time aid to function in a mainstream classroom. The support I received was support that I sought out myself. 
To date, the only aid support that number one receives is my in my classroom is from a former student of mine who is now in college and volunteers to work with his child twice a week. The next two paragraphs are what happened today, May 19th. These have been copied from an email that I sent to the office today seeking assistance. At the start of recess, I told number two to stay in for the first half of recess and finish the work as number two had spent the majority of the first hour with head on desk not working. I had number two repeat what had to be done. Number two sat down and when I went to work with another student, number two snuck out the end door. I went out to the playground field to find number two. I started walking out to where num number two was on the field. Number two looked over, saw me walking out and took off running. At this point, I turned around and headed to the office as I had to get our testing cards. Number two never returned to the classroom until the bell rang. Number two will be escorted to the office when testing is completed. He is a known runner. After we came in from recess, I went over to number three's desk to ask that the hat be taken off and put away the paper on the desk. The instructions were to get out a book and pencil for testing. As I walked away, number three called me a piece of S and tipped over the desk. The boy behind him laughed. Number three shoved the boy's desk into him for laughing and tipped it over. When number three got to the computer lab for testing, number three kicked his picked kicked the book across the floor at two classmates. As testing began, number three threw the headset on the floor and called the computer a F word. I have called the office to have number three removed from testing and for the safety of other students. And I'll be back in two weeks to finish. Okay, can I ask you one question? Um, yes. 2015? Because it relates to the safety and health. And I health see, okay, they're, okay, they're, okay. you're a retired teacher now. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, next speaker is Jabran Stout? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Gibran Stout. Happens all the time. <laughs> For a long time. Um, good evening, esteemed board. I'm nervous. Wow. Deep breath. <laughs> I hadn't planned on being here tonight. Um, I planned on being, whatever. My name is Gibran Stout. Um, I'm a Newport Mesa resident, graduate, and parent. Um, I'm also a former 4-H leader, and I also founded the first and only nonprofit nonprofit youth sports team at the Orange County Fairgrounds Equestrian Center, um, which is a uh, equestrian vaulting team, which is gymnastics on horses. It's not riding; it's mm -hmm. actual team sport. Very different. Um, anyway, um, I'm also very passionate about kids and agriculture and connecting them to it, especially kids who are in the city. I know we're not mm -hmm. city proper, but I'd say mm -hmm. it's pretty fair to say we're a metropolis. Um, I come to you today to inform you about the Orange County Fairgrounds 10-year <laughs> site plan. Um, throughout the process for the last year and a half, they've continually said it's our goal to increase heritage, community, and agriculture, and that's what they are as an agricultural <coughs> district and that they are planning to grow and expand the equestrian center and its service to the community. And this is wonderful. However, when they published the plan, it showed demolition of the equestrian center to be paved over as an RV parking lot. <laughs> so um, as educators, I would hope that you would be concerned about this, as am I. Um, and I don't know if, uh, so next Thursday there's a meeting. If anybody can go, it's Thursday morning, nine o'clock. Um, at this point, the board needs to know how important this gem is. It's not, uh, as many people believe, a bunch of rich ladies. If anybody knows anybody who has horses, we're a bunch of old poor ladies. <laughs> and the truly wealthy buy horse property, and mm -hmm. essentially this equestrian center is like apartments mm -hmm. for, for people with horses. It also allows many people to ride and lease, and there's a ton of programs. And if any of you went to Imaginology, you saw my program there. I was the only horse on the property. Mm -hmm. And um, my organization is run by volunteers. I do not receive a paycheck, nor do any of my coaches. Um, we're there for the sheer love of the sport and the love of the kids. And I will tell you, if the equestrian center weren't there, I wouldn't be there either. I'm, not, I'm simply not able to haul my horse for an event like that. Um, we love the event, and we love being there. And I would, I'm here today to invite you to join us in our efforts to save this gem in the midst of our great city, mm -hmm. cities, school district, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. And I hope we can work together to save this wonderful gem. Thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. Okay. Um, 
So I have two cards for Erica. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Uh, you're the next speaker. Dear members of the board, my name is Erica Roberts and I'm a member of the Mariner School family. Dr. Navarro, you just stated a few minutes ago after John Caldecott spoke, Dr. Navarro, you just stated after, after um, John Caldecott spoke that you couldn't give information because it was private or confidential and that was honoring the teachers. The summary report doesn't say one thing about teachers. It says about what happened. We were promised as parents that we would get that summary report and we actually never have. To go to a lawsuit and lose is just despicable. So we always teach our kids that words and actions should match, and that's what I believe should happen when you tell us something. No one's um, integrity was uh, jeopardized. Just give the summary report. That is what came out. <clears throat> I will remind you, Dr. Navarro, that you stated when first hired that the schools don't belong to us but to stakeholders, and we need to build the schools that they want. I've said this before. This is what we want. We want your belief statement on the district website to match actions. It says the first responsibility is to provide quality education. All children can learn best in safe, clean, caring, aesthetically pleasing environments. Our schools are falling apart. The people are our most important resource and should be treated with respect and dignity. I'm still waiting for an apology. Uh, that we need families as partners with schools and district and sharing ideas and giving import and major decisions affecting their child's education. The district won't exist if there's no children in it. There are children. That we have a responsibility to demonstrate the effective and wise use of money. So this is what we want. We want the Public Records Act to be followed and to stop expensive lawsuits on holding public records illegally. Their Mariner summary report, we were all promised, is just one example. Holding records and losing again and again in court is not okay, it's wasteful. We want a written plan for the overheated days. There's no plan in place, the heat is coming. The policy is that doors remain locked. You're creating heat boxes when that happens. We wouldn't do this to animals. Why are we doing this to teachers and kids? We want schools that are not damaged or dangerous to teachers, example of the Estancia stink. That should have never happened. That is going to turn into another lawsuit. We want endless not lawsuits to end. We want rodents gone. We want materials for sixth, seventh, and eighth. Not because we had to ask, but because it's the right thing to do, and it's the law. These packets are not okay. I don't think it's legal. We want schools where teachers are not in fear from district admin. We want schools with smaller classroom sizes. Uh, Martha just asked Dr. Navarro, Dr. Navarro, I would love it if you would look at me. He's taking Martha, notes. You can look at the video, take the notes then. Martha just asked Dr. Navarro if we could get a report on how we load the classroom sizes. And your statement was, we'll get you a report on how we compare to other districts. We want mental health. We want counselors. We want lawsuits that cost $800,000 for IEPs to go away. We want schools that share across the district programs and supplements that work. We want teachers to make decisions, okay. not executives. I'm sorry, your three minutes are up. We want people up. to feel safe. Thank you. I'll, I'll email you the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, uh, oh, Madam ahead. President, yeah. I would actually like Mr. Lee Sung to explain when we get a grievance from a grievance, uh, what our responsibility is to give to who the report or the response goes to. Uh, Mr. Lee Sung, can you give an overview, maybe not any details, but an overview of uh, what happens when we get a uh, complaint or a grievance and how we have to report to the grievance? Well, if, <coughs> if we're talking about a grievance, that is a uh, violation or uh, an alleged violation, misapplication of the contract, uh, and that term is used quite a bit. Uh, if we're talking about a complaint and a formal complaint has been filed, we do uh, are required to investigate that. And once we complete that investigation, to respond back to the respondent uh, that that filed that complaint. Uh, beyond that, uh, we do not share the results of any investigation. And did we provide a, uh, 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 information to the respondent? Yes, we do with, with all investigations. Okay. We formally respond back to the complainant. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on um, to the um, consent calendar. Move approval as presented. 
Second. Okay, we have uh, approval. I mean, uh, we have um, Mrs. I'm Black motioning. moved to <laughs> approve the consent calendar, and Mrs. Yelsey seconded it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the consent calendar passes, and now we're to <coughs> discussion action. Ms. Olson? Good evening, President Snow, mm -hmm. board members, Dr. Navarro, cabinet, and guests. The item before you tonight is in reference to the 2018-19 school calendar. The Education Code provides any governing board the option to revise the dates to observe specific holidays. And in this particular case, the resolution before you confirms the observation of Washington's birthday on February 18th and designates Lincoln's birthday on February 19th, 2019. And then this will align with the President's recess in our 2018-19 um, school calendar. So we ask that it be considered. So this is something we do. It's, a, it's uh, yeah. an annual okay. basis. Yes. Okay. Do I have a um, motion? Make a motion to approve the okay. calendar is presented. And a second? Second. And Mrs. Black Resolution. seconds? Yes. And so this is a roll call. Okay. Ms. Snow? Yes. Ms. Matoye? Ms. Fleur? Ms. Da Mr. Davenport? Yes. Ms. Franco? Ms. Black, Ms. Yelsey. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, the resolution passes. And moving on to board member reports. Let's start with Mrs. Yelsey. With I'm me? I'm sorry. I didn't okay. talk into the microphone. Start with <laughs> Mrs. Yelsey. Um, well, we were on vacation last week. I hope everyone enjoyed it. But <laughs> before that, I believe. Um, Mrs. Um, Black and I attended the CTE Summit, uh, which was put on by, by Vitalink, and it was an incredible display of all the CTA, C, CTE yeah. programs uh, going on throughout the county, and our very own Annie Young, Young Love uh, was honored by Vitalink. She, is she the president? Mm -hmm. yeah. But she does a remarkable job, and she obviously works for us as well, but um, really some amazing things going on in the CTE area. And Mrs. Black can probably speak to that a little bit more because I left that to go over to the Ray School Safety Meeting, and I know a lot of our district personnel was there. Uh, Dwayne Cox, who's a principal, uh, brought this group together, and he really did an amazing job of presenting to the parents, and, and it was a room uh, larger than this filled with parents who were interested in he hearing about the safety program at the school. And they asked a lot of questions. Uh, there were Costa Mesa police there. As I said, there were district personnel. There were people from the city. Um, and it was just a remarkable evening because I think everyone left there feeling that the school, the parents left there feeling um, that the school was really embracing community concerns about safety in the area because there's so many outside activities going on there and um, felt like they were sending their kids to a safe environment. So it, that was great to see. Um, some of us did also attend yesterday morning bus driver appreciation, <laughs> a breakfast in this room, and I have never seen <laughs> such a nice breakfast anywhere at this district. I walked in the back and uh, the smell was unbelievable and there was all this food set up and it's, it just smelled and looked so good. And I'm thinking, my first thought is, how much is this costing? And I f then realized it was the Newport Harbor culinary um, class that put on this breakfast. So they did a remarkable job. Um, and the bus driver appreciation, just the classified staff who put that on, they were amazing. I think everyone there enjoyed it. So once again, because bus drivers are so important to all of us, to all of our kids, um, it was a really nice event. And I know very much appreciated. And um, I think that's it. Okay. And I'm going to talk with uh, Mrs. Floor about the, the CTE, so I'm going to hold that off for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it was, you know, I always come back so enthusiastic, and um, and then the whole weekend, um, I had the opportunity to take my grandsons. Pretty exciting to go, and th so they want to move here. 
and told them it would take them three hours to get here in the morning for school and they weren't willing to get up for that. So they loved it, but they didn't love it that much. So. But anyway, and, but it is really, you know, we have to be very grateful to have, in Orange County, to have, the, I mean, this is an amazing collaboration with all of our businesses and industry and, um, you know, the universities and colleges and um, districts in Orange County. It's just, it's a great collaboration and it's hard not to get excited. So but we'll share some more when we, um, in two weeks, how about that? Right. No report this evening? Okay. I really don't have a report either. Um, I got uh, the flu, so <laughs> oh, I have a big sorry. report. <laughs> I, I just want to state that um, as long as I am on this board, I will always vote to protect the privacy rights of our children, our teachers, and our parents. And, um, and I will put whatever behind that I need to put, because it's important to me if you tell people that um, you are going to keep something confidential. If something happens to their children, you need to keep it confidential. And I will always do that. And you can put in as many um, Freedom of Information Act requests as you want. I will always fight that, because it, it's not right. And that is one reason I got on this board, to do what I believe is right. And so that's all I want to say. Do you have any more to say? This would be your third time. <laughs> you know, I think uh, uh, that we all have to look at our moral compass and understand what uh, is important. Uh, everybody has a different perspective, depending on what part of the landscape they're standing on. Um, your, this board here is held to a higher standard. Uh, you're held to confidentiality, you can't share a lot, uh, but, and we're held to, to legal uh, mm -hmm. pr procedures. Um, and yes, when we, we believe that uh, when in employees are interviewed, when they share information, when they're we're following up on someone's performance, uh, that those rights are to be protected. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we do that. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, we've made that promise, and if we continue to get challenged, we'll continue to protect that right. We owe, to, we owe it to our employees mm -hmm. uh, whose privacy and confidentiality is at risk to do everything we can to protect it. If the, church, if the courts uh, uh, decide otherwise, by all means, we will comply with the court. Absolutely. But we will do everything in our power to keep our word that, that, mm -hmm. that we gave to our employees. Mm -hmm. Um, we also need, and I agree, we need to champion our students. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know that uh, people want to hear <coughs> details about what's happened, but I can tell you that in one case where uh, a student was thought to have written something threatening on a desk, that within a week, uh, that, in, that investigation uncovered that that student had been set up by three other students, okay? And people don't know that. And we can't share that, and we aren't going to tell you where that happened. But that's why you do. That's why you conduct an investigation because some child's life mm -hmm. is 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 in in the balance, being held in the balance. So there's a lot that you learn when you conduct interviews, when you uh, conduct investigations, and you uh, identify the facts, and uh, you make determinations upon those facts. We can't share those with everybody, uh, and we don't share those with everybody. So. Um, we will remain uh, uh, steadfast to our commitment to not speak about personnel issues, to not speak about children's issues, and to not share information about other families. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Soul set. No report. <laughs> Just to uh, update uh, Mr. Lee Sung's report about our safety visits, we conducted our seventh one today. Mm -hmm. So we have now gone through seven of 34 sites. We will be going to all of our schools and every campus that has a district employee. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's 34 in total. We've done seven, going to do four more tomorrow. So by the end, by this time tomorrow night, we'll be a third of the way through. And uh, it's been very, very good, very engaging conversations with our principals. Uh, we're learning a lot, and we're really looking forward to the results of this study. Great, thank you. Mr. Trader. 
<clears throat> Moody's Investors Service uh, published a update on the district's credit rating on April 13th. And you'll be happy to know that, uh, quote, in their overview, they, overview, they said, Newport Mesa, <clears throat> Newport Mesa USD's credit position is outstanding. Its AAA rating far surpasses the median rating of, uh, for most U.S. school districts. Notable credit factors include an extensive tax base, a robust financial position, and mid-ranged debt burdens. Thank you. I wondered why your eyes were twinkling over there. <laughs> okay. Dr. Bauermeister, Dr. Sir. Uh, last board meeting, I announced that both Sonora and Newport Coast have received the California Distinguished uh, School Awards. Um, and we did hear back that um, Newport Coast has also received confirmation that they are receiving the Exemplary Arts Award, which is an additional piece uh, related to the arts program. So we're thrilled for Newport Coast and Sonora for <coughs> achieving such an, uh, a highly recognized award and representing our district in such a wonderful way. Wonderful. Thank you. Mr. Lee Sung, you're done. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much for coming tonight.